Vanderpump Rules season 11, episode 12. We're going to roast it. We're going to recap it. I have tons of notes. A P P L E S. How you like that? Saw you on the internet. You a hot mess. We are going to have some fun. So grab your favorite beverage, put some comfy pants on, or no pants at all. And let's get started. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of gold. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Stand Up Comedian and Vanderpump Rules, unfortunately, super fan. Jolene Lunds are here to roast and recap and talk all about the latest episode of Vanderpump Rules, season 11, episode 12. And I think the name of this episode should have been like Mistress Pity Party. It could have been... Um, Jealous Lala making no sense why she's getting mad at Katie because she's friends with Ariana and really she doesn't have any time for Katie, but really she's blaming Katie for not having any time for her. And really it's just a whole mess and she doesn't know where she's at and she's crying. And who's your daddy? Sperm? Um, or Tom Schwartz's hair still looks like shit. Okay, we are going to talk about it, you guys. So welcome everyone joining me live in the chat. Hello, everyone on the replay. Let me know in the comments if you are a replay crew. And please sound off in the live chat and let me know that you are here. Let me know all your thoughts, hopes, dreams, and opinions about Vanderpump Rules. Remember, I'm very opinionated. I'm biased on who I like and all the things like a fan is. I am just a fan of the show, but you're welcome to have your opinion of the show in the chat. And we can all agree to disagree as long as no one's being a big butthole. That's it. We can have some fun and we can laugh because this show continues to get so ridiculous. All right. Uh, please subscribe, you guys. We are now over 37,000 subscribers and I am so grateful. So thank you. And if you want to support the channel further, you can do what Evelyn did here. You can send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. We can talk about it. There's also a super sticker option. There's a super thanks after the video posts if you're on the replay crew. Um, or you can hit me up on the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. Everything is at the bottom of the screen or my YouTube membership, Patreon. It's in the description of the video. You don't have to, but it's appreciated. Thank you, Evelyn. Evelyn says, love your VPR recaps, Jolene. I love you, Evelyn. You are just, you're a champion. You're wonderful. Uh, Delicia Champagne. Thank you. <laughs> I love your name. Thank you for the super chat. And smash that like. Let's set a like goal for 900 and see if we can get there. All right. I just want to show you guys the notes I have on this. You know, all season, I really haven't taken notes on the episode. I've been just flying by the seat of my pants, raw emotion. But this one had some zingers. So here's my notes. And here is <laughs> me pausing every two seconds to uh, talk to text, write down things. Um, also, make sure you're following me on social media at Jolly Lunzer on TikTok and Instagram because I've been posting shorter things on there um before i go live and you know things about vanderpump rules and stuff um so definitely follow me there at julian lunzer and at no offense all offense <sighs> and if you guys didn't check it out i did a video yesterday an edited video which took me way too long every time i do those videos i'm like why but i kind of like to because they're like puzzles and i pieced together piece by piece um joe's interview from rachel raquel's podcast where she talks about the deterioration of her relationship with Tom Schwartz, and then two different Schwartz interviews, one Excess Hollywood and one being a recent after show about his feelings about the Joe relationship that he's not even sure if it was a relationship. And she was like, my heart will go on and on. And there's little Buffy. Oh, look, it's like I'm petting her. Ah, hi, Buffy. So uh, check that out. Show it some love if you want. And it's a great uh, look at just different pages they were on and just how the Toms treat the women in their lives. And Tom Schwartz gets away with it um, because he hides behind this, oh, I'm this uh, uh, you know, what Lala would have said last year when she was being cool. Was it last year? I think, oh, fingers in my mouth, fingers in my mouth. I, got, I don't know, fingers in my mouth. And now <sighs> she's like full patriarchy and it's like, uh, so boo, boo, Katie Kirshner with the wonderful name. I always say, um, thank you so much for becoming a member on YouTube, Pamela. Thank you for the super chat. Pamela says apologies in advance. I'm on NyQuil. Oh yes. Let's get those silly NyQuil comments. So my comments might be off the chain. We love it. I love it. Glad to catch a live. I hope you feel better, Pamela and NyQuil. 
chef's kiss for the NyQuil. Jill Christine, thank you for the super sticker. Okay, you guys, let's get into it. Oh, Minnesota Blondie coming in with a super chat. Thank you, MN Blondie. Appreciate you for the super sticker. All right. <sighs> all right. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. We got to get into it. There's just so much. There's so, all right, let me know if I'm, am I the only one who has to take pauses while watching the show? I literally have to pause. All right, we're going to roast this. We're going to recap it. We're going to try to have a good time. But I have to take breaks as I'm watching an episode. I can't get through a full episode in one seating. I used to be able to. Last season, I was like, oh, my God. You know, it was it was difficult at times just because the emotional, um, the, you know, the huge, uh, you know, emotional stakes and things. But this season, I'm like, oh, fuck, no, not again. Oh, God, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, Melissa says same. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ida. I saw that video, Julian. Your creative editing oh, and putting those shots together was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You guys, you understand. Need a lot of breaks. Amanda says, okay. Jada says, same. So, so cringe. Reality TV lover Sandoval, he's disgusting. All right. So we enter into this episode, episode 12, and we are doing the Sheena is at Kyle Chan's well, um, jewelry store. And they're filming her 27s version of Because We're Good As Gold. Uh, 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 uh. And Ariana comes and Lala comes. Look at Lala. Looks like she's about to. She looks like she gave birth to those drums right there with that pose. Like that is like such an interesting pose I just noticed on Lala where she could have like given birth to those drums, which would be a miracle too. You know, all births are miracles. Marissa Conlin, thank you for the super chat. Marissa says, I have to pause while watching to scream into a pillow, right? Scream into a pillow, maybe cry briefly. I have to hit the ticky talkie, say things into my little video and create stuff. Okay. So they're going to shoot this video. And Sheena's like, oh my God, you guys, I'm so excited to film Good as Gold because this is a song that will never die. Even if people want it to die, it's never going to die because it's such like a good song. It's a good song. Uh, I love it. And I, I'll be honest. I do love Sheena's Apple song. Good as gold. The 27s are pretty rad, but there's going to be a time where this, this, this song has to die. It's not like it's American pie. Okay. Um, but as long as she can make money off it, God bless. I'm not a hater. I'm like some people. La la. So, uh, they immediately, or Katie calls in and Katie's like, uh, uh, I'm sick, bitch. I can't make it because Katie, well, they think Katie's not sick. They think Katie's not showing up to the music video shoot because of what happened with Lala. And I 100% co-sign and support Katie in that decision because F these hoes, if they are going to treat her like this and her friendship, I would call in sick too. It's like, listen. Um, Sheena, yeah, would I love to come help you for free? Uh, yeah, when you're being a good friend to me, but you completely had Lala's back and Lala's not making any sense as she's going to lunch with Joe Montana, okay? She's not making any sense as her and Aaron Rodgers are having sex. No, they're not having sex. That was a total Freudian slip because Joe wants to have sex with <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. So I think I just put it into the universe that Joe is going to sleep with Aaron Rodgers, who I believe no shade to the Packers. I know we got some Wisconsin people here. Shout out. Um, as a Minnesotan, I know it can come off as hate, but Aaron Rodgers is a little, uh, he's, is, I mean, with the, the vaccine, the anti-vaxxer. And my husband just told me something today because he follows the foosball that Aaron Rodgers said. And I was like, is, are you sure that wasn't Alex Jones? And he was like, no, it was Aaron Rodgers. And I'm like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I digress. So Katie is like, no, I don't, I'm, I can't come. I'm sick. And she was like, I can't believe people don't want to come to my gun as gall. Yes. It went on some insane rant. Chell was telling me about it. Hype my husband, Chell. And I should have paid better attention. I was thinking about other things like dogs or his butt or something. Okay. Oh, he's not a Packer. Okay. Then we can talk shit. Uh, is he in anything? Is he on a team? Oh, that unfortunate weirdo <laughs> yeah reality tv lover he's a weirdo man like just throw the ball sir throw the ball i mean i know we can all have opinions sure 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 we're americans but let's get our medical degrees before we start talking okay so uh sheena is just like we're gonna ask and then immediately rachel raquel's 
podcast interview on Bethany Frankel's podcast comes up because this is right when that podcast dropped. So everyone has opinions about it and they're like, okay, um, you guys are so smart. He's on the jets now. Awesome. Sorry for the jets, but awesome. So they're like, oh, did you guys see Rachel was in Bethany's thing on her podcast? Yeah. I don't think they said Bethany. The thing is they didn't name the podcast and you know, Bethany's like, you know, but you knew they weren't going to give Bethany any shine after she is suing Bravo. <laughs> And Andy Cohen's probably like, do not mention uh, <laughs> Bethany Frankel's podcast. So they're talking about Rachel's interview with Bethany. Um, and they talk about how she discussed James. Or no, James talks about it. Allie talks about it. Sheena, Ariana, Lala, they're all talking about it. Uh, they said that Rachel is claiming that she was never good friends with Ariana, which she has said multiple times now. And she doubled down on. Girl, we what? I'm so tired of these revisionist historians. You know, Lala literally on her podcast was like, I'm not lying. The fans are lying. They have revisionist history. And then everyone's like, boom, here's some proof. Ooh, Coco Makoka or Coca, uh, that wonderful content creator on TikTok and also Christina Coca on TikTok and Instagram. She was like, boom, here we go. Here's the receipts. Here you go. We're not lying. You, you tell us that we didn't watch the show. You tell We saw these things, Rachel. So same goes for Rachel. Her and Lala want to rewrite history. And we're like, no, that's not going to fly. So um, she's like, I was never good friends. And then Sheena's like, yeah. And she said, I have a savior complex. Uh, I, uh, I was like, do I think Sheena has a savior complex? Uh, I don't, I'll have to sit on that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm going to literally sit on it. Um, and also that she never loved Tom, which is my favorite part of that interview that I forgot. Uh, I love it because it bothered Tom Sandy butt so much. So Rachel was like, I never loved Lala might have loved Tom, but I didn't love Tom, Bethany. Lala would say I did, but I didn't. I was just getting over my relationship with James Kennedy. So I didn't love Tom. I don't like to speak in public because it's hard. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So she never loved Tom and she was still reeling from the James breakup. James is talking to Allie and there's like two scenes happening at once with the, the ladies talking about Rachel on this podcast and then James and Allie talking about the podcast and James is like, yeah, I think I'm going to meet up with Sandoval. Ugh. You know, we work on our relationship. And then Lala's like, okay, BTW, I'm having bitch, bitch, bitch. Lauren from Utah came and she was like, bitch, you got to find me a baby daddy with the sperm, yo. So Lala, you guys, Lala, Lala has the goal, the audacity to turn to Ariana and go, hey, bitch, you got a house still. Can I have my party at your house? I am so glad Lala has two houses now and I'm proud of her. Good for you. Get it, girl. Because she stays asking people to have parties at their home. And you can't ask Ariana to have a party at her home when you are talking shit about her, mad shit behind her back, about how she should move out and get out of that house and how she shouldn't fight for her investment, fight for her home, fight for what's rightfully hers and just let Tom win. Are you crazy? And now you're like, yeah, but I'm going to... Put, I got some jizz I got to choose from. So if you could like, uh, if I could have it at your house. And Ariana goes, um, probably not. Because since Anne has left, the house has turned to absolute doggy diarrhea. And there's Sandoval shit everywhere. You see, Sandoval might have, he's developed, he's hoarding purses. W woman's power suits, pearls and purses. Okay, power suits, pearls, and purses. It's the three P's of Sandoval now. He is just stealing, appropriating our woman culture while treating us like shit, which you can't do, sir. You can't do. I'm so tired of seeing this man with all the accessories that we love. And again, this doesn't apply to anyone who's not Tom Sandoval. So a lot of these things, many, any gender or gen non-binary, wear whatever you want. But if you are an evil lady hater, 
and you're a part of the woman hater club, you can't wear our stuff. You can't do that. You cannot give give us our stuff back, Tom. Give us our stuff back. That is so wrong. You hate women clearly, but you want to be us. You hate us because you want to be us. Like I feel I'm getting those vibes from Brock too. You hate us because you ain't us. You, anytime you meet a misogynist, they're the ones that steal your undies and wear them themselves. That is, it's, there's something in the psyche that's not adding up. All right. Where they're like, oh, I'm just jealous of those bitches. You know, they love us so much that it has to turn into hate and they internalize that shit. It's just like, be who you want to be. Okay. But they hate us because they ain't us and they will steal your brassiers. All right. And, and this does not apply to trans women. Trans women are in a totally different people who are trans as a total. I'm talking about hater, misogynist men who identify as cis straight males who want to appropriate our lady culture. <laughs> okay. Trying to get a pap smear. Tom, I heard Tom made an appointment at the guy now. And he was like, give me some of them duck lips. And they were like, no, Tom, get off our ride. I would, I'll, I wish that Tom and Brock had to have gyno. I wish they had to have, I wish them all the pap smears. I wish them 365 days straight up pap smears, mm -hmm. smears and smears. That's what I wish these men, the way they're behaving. Mostly Tom, sometimes Brock, the cis, the cis and the males of it all. <laughs> I'm a cis male. I could yell at women, but I I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh my gosh. Just so over this dude. So completely. Sorry. It's just like, girl, get off my ride. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? Where did you find her? Where did you find her? All right. So Ariana's like, um, no, Tom is, the house is dirty and we have boxes everywhere. And why are you asking of all the people? Why would you ask Ariana when Lala has made it a point to hate on Ariana and be like, I don't feel bad for her if she doesn't move out. I'm sorry, what? You have no empathy. You have nothing. And still she doubles down on it on the after show when James Kennedy in an early Vanderpump Rules after show calls her out and says, it's different. You didn't own the home with Rand. Rand owned it. She goes, it's not different, James. And she told James to like suck a dick. And he goes, well, that's not very nice <laughs> because James was like, no, this is Ariana's investment. This is her money. Are you, are you crazy? And now that she owns a home, I bet Lala would feel a lot differently because it's always rules for everybody else, but not for Lala. Lala. Right. I want my pink shirt back. <laughs> oh, mean girls reference. I love it. And I want my pink shirt back. Bitch. Yes. Yeah, spread them, Tom. You really want to, you really want to experience what it's like being a woman? You wouldn't last a second. As a woman, Tom, in the lady world, you, you are too fragile, sir. You are so breakable. You got those little baby balls, little baby man balls. They're very sensitive. Women, you, no, no, you could not last a minute. <sighs> okay. So, um, Cammy says my favorite part was how the graphic said after Anne left <laughs> and then showed the mess. So Anne was doing so much cleaning of this house. It was ridiculous. Poor Anne, justice for Anne. What did you get paid, Anne? Because Anne's friends who like filled in for her and that bartender who bartended, that cute little redhead who bartended at Sandoval's party said she never got paid. Tom allegedly doesn't pay his workers. Remember, everything I say is true except for the parts that are false. Okay. All things are alleged for entertainment purposes only. But she said you don't pay Tom. So, and I think he steals their clothes. So not only does he not pay his women workers, he steals their shit. Butthole. Oh, Lordy. So, um, let's see. So Lala is, is like, okay, I guess I'll ask Lisa, I ask Lisa, uh, if I can use her house. Sandoval visits Schwartz at his apartment. This scene made me, I had to stop 76 times as old as Tom Sandoval is. I had to stop during this scene. I couldn't handle it. He shows up. Schwartz is there. His hair is yellow. The cute dogs are there. Schwartz's apartment's a mess. We have remnants of Joe everywhere, even though Joe was nowhere to be found this episode because she's licking her wounds, went back to Wisconsin to see her dad and wonder why the F didn't I see this coming? This is how he treated Katie. Is this what happens when you pick team boyfriend over team all the ladies, all your girlfriends? I guess so. So Sandoval comes over. Schwartz is like, hey, what is up? 
oh, I might have just strung another lady along, but I'm quirky fun guy. Thank you for the cash app, Pam. That was so sweet and generous of you. I appreciate that. It just came through on my phone. Thank you so much. Uh, and then Tom is like, what's up? Okay, uh, I'm wearing a tank top. Uh, Schwartz, I'm just shell-shocked. Uh, because I heard Rachel's podcast. Uh, her interview. She said she never loved me. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And he is trying to do his best lifetime acting. It is not believable, Tom. Tom put some visine in his eyes. Uh-uh. She said she never loved me. She said she had it worse than anybody. <laughs> he cries and says, I made changes. Uh, okay. And for her to hopefully see and appreciate. Uh. And I'm like, what changes did you make? Being in a karaoke band? Painting your nails a little bit of blue in the white? Taking off your mustache? Those aren't like positive changes towards the betterment of you as an overall human. Those are just material, Tom. You carry a purse now? You wear a pearl necklace? I think he's always worn a pearl necklace, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, Marissa Conlon, thank you for the super chat. Marissa says, imagine Sandoval going through a menstrual cycle. Oh, my God. Margaret Cho used to have a joke about if men had their periods, you'd walk in an apartment, it'd be like a murder scene. So they couldn't handle this shit. And definitely Sandoval could not handle this. Oh, my. If he had, oh, he'd be like, it hurts. Oh, oh the inner lining of my, my uterine lining is shedding. Oh, nobody has it worse than me. Oh. Oh, uh, when do I take this thing out? Uh, I'm leaking everywhere. Uh, uh, he would just, <laughs> I can't afford these things. How much are tampons? Uh, uh, I'm going to try a moon cup. Uh, God, you mean we just have to pay for this shit? We didn't ask for it. Uh, and it's taxed. Oh my God. There, listen, if men or Sandoval got their period, menstrual products would be free. They would just be handed to you. They definitely wouldn't because they'd be like, oh, the poor guys, they didn't ask to be born women and get their periods. We're just going to give them free period products, all the free period. And then women get it and they're like, fuck those bitches. They don't have to pay. Tax them too. Make it expensive. Put like fancy labels and brands on it. Tell them one's better than the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charge more for the super plus and the super plus plus plus. Yeah, yeah. Make them all uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Braid the string. Women love braids. Yeah, yeah, that'll be more expensive. You know, it's it's so shitty. So Tom is shell-shocked. She never loved him. He made some changes. Oh, I'd do anything for her, man. That's what he tells Schwartz. I would do anything for her. Except for break up with your actual girlfriend, Tom. That's the one thing... You did not do for Rachel Raquel. I had to put this on the no offense, all offense Instagram. As I was watching this, it's like Sandoval about Rachel. I would have done anything for her man, except break up with my actual girlfriend. Except, and then after the fact, except support her mental health, her wanting to stay in treatment. Like how crazy, how crazy. Hello, Susan from the UK. Just, you know what? Rewind and watch the beginning later. You haven't missed much. We're still in the early scenes. We're just having so much fun. Maybe he's going through, he is very hormonal. Maybe he is going through um, menopause. It's like menopause, but for men, menopause. Because that's what it seems like. But he's way more annoying than anyone I've ever seen go through menopause. Oh, because... Uh, menopausal queens. I mean, nothing wrong with us. He's too annoying. So he's crying. He's like, I made changes. And Schwartz is like, well, I mean, everybody, everybody went through it. Everybody experienced this Sandoval. And he's like, no, I thought it was going to be us versus the world. Ah. He literally says to go through all that, me and Rachel and not give it a shot. What was it all for? It was for your boner, Tom. It was for your midlife crisis. It was for your fragile ego. It was for your lack of self-control. It's an affair, dude. How many affairs last your whole life? You had a side chick. What are you talking about? And we don't believe it. We don't believe you care about Rachel. How can you be crying here when you're literally watching you this season go on dates? He was like, I just, uh, I just, you know, wanna, I wanted to see what's out there. I've never seen what's out there. 
You've never stopped seeing what's out there. What are you talking about? What, what is this? What is this man talking about? You don't care about her. You're already hitting on those ladies while you were peeing in the pool at the same time who came to your house for the pool party. You had that singles mixer where they were there. You've done so many things. You just went to another singles mixer, but you said you're waiting for Rachel to make the final decision. Oh. But again, in Tom's defense, which you won't hear very well or very often or very well, um, that's how he handles relationships is he's like, oh, technically I was waiting for you in other women's vaginas. Cause that's essentially what he did to Ariana. He was still dating her, still having sex with her occasionally. And he was just thinking, well, if it gets better with her, I'll just throw Rachel out, you know? So Tom, you never loved Rachel. No, you didn't even come clean to Ariana. Ariana had to find it in your phone. You didn't even want to break up with Ariana. You loved the brand. <sighs> Come on, sir. We don't believe you. You didn't love this woman. You didn't act as though you loved. And I'm sorry. We are never. I did a short about this, but we are never, ever, ever going to feel bad for your mistress troubles. You really want sympathy because your mistress doesn't want to be you. Bitch, that's called karma. Call Taylor Swift. Like, that's how it should be. You fuck over your lady friend and your mistress fucks you over. That's how it should go. You really think we're going to have mistress pity? We're going to be like, oh, that poor man who cheated on his significant other for seven months to a year to two years. We'll never know the truth because him and Tom and Tom lie. Oh, who cheated with her best friend while she was losing her grandma and her dog, her their dog, Charlotte, RIP. You mean he can't be with his mistress? Oh, God. I really thought those kids were going to make it work. That's so great. Oh, my God. That is like, it's like Romeo and Juliet. Oh, my God. You mean the two people that were fucking in a Jetta to hide the fact that they were having sex while Ariana was mourning the death of their dog are not going to last? Well, then what is love? What is love? You know, I mean, come on. Oh, hell to the na na na. Nicole Sheen says, yes, sir. We don't feel bad for you and your, you're not going to make mistress pity a thing. It's not going to happen. Move on.org. We don't feel sorry for you. Okay. You're not giving a shot. What was it all for? It was for your boner, Tom, which I heard from you. This episode doesn't last very long. Did you guys hear Tom Sandoval when he was talking to James? He said, oh, no, me and Raquel, we didn't even like do it. We would talk for like five or six hours. Oh. And then. We would do it for like a little bit, like a little, little tiny bit of time. And then we would talk more. Okay, ladies. Well, if you want to talk to this guy who uses like like a damn comma, there you go. You can go date him. Oh, my gosh. He's not going to give you a long loving, but he will give you long run on sentences and like, 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 like. Ugh, I don't know. Again, that dries up the baby door. Talking to a man like Sandoval who just... No smarts at all. Intellect zero. That will, that will literally, I've said it before, but it'll sew your baby door shut. It'll be a miraculous, miracle baby door sewing. Closed. Closed for business forever. That's what your vagina will say after talking to this man for five minutes in his dirty underwear. Because Ariana says, you don't change your drawers, sir. You don't do it. So he cries. I laugh. Um, then Lisa Vanderpump is like, oh, hello, darling. She's at Tom Tom. And she's like, oh, we had to close pump. Oh, such a, a shame. And we see Logan, Ariana's bestie, who works at Tom Tom. He might be a manager. And little blonde Logan. And they're brainstorming cocktails with the Toms because she has to find a way to include these negative 5% investors in Tom Tom because their names in it, but everybody's name is Tom. I know like 60 Toms. So I, I don't know. I feel like she could just go and get any geek off the street named Tom and be like, you will be the namesake of my restaurant. Okay, darling. So they're going to do brunch now because that's what Pump used to do, RIP Pump. And uh, she's like, oh, the Toms are going to bring their cocktails. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, with Lisa, the Toms and Logan, uh, Tom is late. They're supposed to be there at like 1 15. It's 1 45. Again, this man has no respect at all. I mean, I, someone with ADHD definitely have time blindness. I struggle with being, um, on time and things, but this man just strolled in like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. He did not care. He did not care. <laughs> so he strolls in late 
Schwartz is already there. And Lisa goes, oh, darling, don't talk to me. What are we going to do about this hair? It's horrible. He's like, I like it, golly gee darn, geez gosh. I just had sex with Joe and then told her, I'm having mixed feelings. <laughs> I left her crying and eating her hair. I mean, it's just, it's bad. It's bad. Tom Schwartz, you do not know how to treat the ladies. So Tom walks in, he's like, so, <gasps> and he's got his shirt unbuttoned down to the navel. And Lisa's like, oh, is everything okay, Tom? <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> yes, Schwartz comes in, Susan, and goes, I squeezed some strawberries. <laughs> like, it's like, thanks, Schwartz. Thanks, Tom. Wow. You guys are really killing it in the restaurant biz. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Lisa's like, oh, what's wrong, darling? And Tom's like, whoa. We saw, I mean, it's, it's the podcast star. She goes, oh, darling, you didn't listen to that podcast, did you? Of course I did. Oh. And immediately he's yelling at Lisa. And I'm like, why, Lisa Vanderpump, why would you allow this tiny man, this no bald wonder to yell at you or speak in a tone of voice like that to you? Why would you ever let this douche nozzle raise his voice to you after everything you've done and accomplished in life? Why are you such a male, problematic male sympathizer? The internalized misogyny is so freaking strong in her that she actually thinks she doesn't deserve better. She doesn't deserve to be spoken to better. This is a trashy dude. You literally are giving him all the opportunities. And this is how he's talking to you? <sighs> I mean, roid rage, maybe. Who knows? It's crazy. He's like, God, I, of course I listen. Like, I don't know what they say. She's like, oh, Tom, so you're going to listen to every episode of the podcast? If she comes out with one tomorrow, you're going to listen? Yes, sir. I am. I have to know. She's like, oh, you're going to make yourself miserable, Tom. You're going to torture yourself. Yes. I like torturing myself, Tom. You couldn't take a little itty bitty pain. Stop it. You just want to be a victim. You don't want to own. You don't want to own your shit. So he's yelling at Lisa, and Lisa's like, don't touch yourself. I want to, Lisa. I can't. <laughs> Lisa says, uh, what can Raquel, I love how she calls her Raquel, what can Raquel possibly say that's going to make anybody look at her in a different light? Lisa, the same could be said about Tom. The call is coming from inside. Tom, Tom. You think Tom Sandoval is worthy of a, a redemption arc, but not Rachel Raquel? And this isn't me sticking up for Rachel Raquel. This is just saying, do you see how ridiculous that is? Do you see the hypocrisy of being like, oh, Tom is trying. Why? Because he showed up to the reality show to make money. I mean, they're both not doing what they need to be doing. At first, it appeared Rachel Raquel was doing a little more than Tom to actually get better. But now with her podcast and her new lawsuit and shit, I'm like, oh, she's just, she's lost. She's still lost. But you're like, oh, Tom is worthy of a redemption arc, oh, Tom's gonna hurt himself. Well, what if Rachel Raquel hurts herself after you saying that? You just basically told everybody, oh, Rachel Raquel can never say anything that'll make us look at her differently than a whore. I mean, uh, paraphrasing, but in so many words, but Tom, who's just yelling at women and blaming everyone else and trying to be the victim of his own affair? <laughs> oh my gosh, Lisa, please, ma'am, please, please, please. Put some respect on women and put some respect on your own name to never be talked to by a douchebag like this, the way he's talking to you. And then Lisa said, I'm like, Lisa, where is, what is, what show is Lisa watching? Lisa's like, eh, Tom was, he, I just didn't want to get him upset because he was getting so evened out. When did you think this dude who's constantly roid raging, wearing women's power suits and blaming everyone else for him sticking his dick where it shouldn't belong. Where did you see the evening out? Where did that happen? I'm just curious. I just, I would love to know. Where did he even out? He's on a million. He's like, ah, all the time. Which woman can I yell at? Who can I blame? What? All he's doing is like working out. He's not, um, I think my husband's singing to the dogs, I think. 
dog parade. They're having a dog parade. If you guys can hear that, that's my husband going dog parade. They're having a dog parade. So, oh goodness, you guys. I mean, this was like, I'm like, Lisa, be for real, be for real. Uh, then they discussed the house situation. Lisa's like, what's going on with the house? And Tom's like, oh, Ariana finally got back to me. Uh, but you know what? She took two months, so I might change my mind. Uh, what? Do we have a dog parade? Dog parade. Dog parade. Dog parade. Dog parade. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we have a little dog parade. Dog, dog parade. parade. What's up, babies? Dog parade. Dog parade. There's the dog husband. Parade. Okay, they're, this is what we do in the house. Oh, we're resting. This is how we have. Oh, no, they're dog tired. They've already been to the park and a walk, so they're tired. Right, Teddy? Oh, he's just laying there. Buffy over there. Hey, guys. Can you put producer Tilly on her bed, Joe, if you see her? I can't force her to do anything. Oh, yeah. I've learned from Adriana. Ariana. Is that people are going to make their own choices, and that's just what it is. You've learned that from Ariana and Tom or Rachel and Tom? Um, whoever the one that applies to you. Okay. My husband learned something from Vanderpump. He can't quite articulate it, but it's probably. <laughs> it's probably that. Oh my gosh. Dog parade. Dog parade. Oh, duh, duh. <laughs> Stay for the wholesomeness. Yeah. Come for the shade and the dragging. Stay for the wholesomeness with the dog parade, you know, because we're only really mean to the assholes. We're not mean to the nice people. No, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. Sandoval and his crude jokes. Chell's sighs are hilarious. <laughs> Did he sigh? I didn't even notice. I've been married so long. That's just like foreplay. <laughs> when you hear your husband sigh, you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's nice stuff. Okay. Hey, Buffy girl. So um, he's like, oh, Ariana, yeah, she finally got back to my email. But it's been like two months. So now Tom, who was like, Ariana, you got to enter my email, hotmail.com. You got to hit my lawyer up. I sent it on Yahoo myself. I don't have a lawyer. He's been bugging her about this house situation. He wants to buy her out. He made an offer. And finally, Ariana's like, all right, fine. She's ready to accept the offer. She knows this dude can't afford it. You ain't got money like that, Tom. You took from your mom's retirement, sir. We're not stupid. You know, some of us ladies are good at math. Not me. But there are many ladies out there good at math. All right. And even me being like math illiterate, I still knew you could not afford this place. So... He's like, she took too long. Tom says Ariana took two months for her offer. And now he's got to think about it because ugh, things have changed. He says his thoughts have maybe changed since then. Tom says Ariana took so long to get back to him that now he's on the fence of whether he wants to keep the house at all and whether he can afford it. Because he says if he has to refinance, it'll be more than double of what he's currently paying. <sighs> no, you're... The reason you're denying her offers because you can't afford it and you just want to control in the situation. That's what you want in every situation. You want to control, but you're you're not smart, sir. You're not smart. We saw what you were doing. We saw it coming from a mile away. Okay. Will someone please put Sandoval in a timeout? I would love to. If anyone has that power, please do it. Please do it. And if he's in the chat, time him out because I know he watches Tom. Stop watching, Tom. You're not going to like what you see. You could learn something. You're not going to like what you see. So thank you for the super chat, A. Callis. Um, but that's what it is. It all comes down to control. He's still trying to fuck with Ariana. He knows he can't afford that. It's a way to use her as the scapegoat. It's a way to make her the bad guy in the villa. I'm trying to buy her out. And then she's like, all right, bet. Go ahead, pay it. And he's like, oh, okay, I got a lighter. I found some of your Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, bragger, and a, a AirPod case with one AirPod. Can I pay for it? You're like, no, Tom, you need actual dollars. Doll hairs? Stop it, dad jokes. Money. Buku skrilla. You need moolah. We knew this man couldn't afford it. And so it's our problem or it's Ariana's problem that you didn't figure out your finances before. You knew you couldn't afford it. Or I mean, again, maybe you're just, you're really that dim that you didn't get it. But it's going to cost him more than double. Well, that's your problem. You got money all around town, sir. You're just, you owe people. Pay back. Pay back your uh, money to your mom, Tom. The money that you owe uh, that you took out of the equity of the home. I mean, who's going to want to borrow to this dude? Horrible. And then, oh, then we're going to get to later. He's trying to get Schwartz to like 
co-sign a loan for him because he's so bad right now. He's stretched so thin that he needs mommy and daddy to co-sign. And mom and dad are like, no, Tom, you already took a quarter of a mil from our retirement. And he's like, I'll get Schwartz. Let's take out a loan together. Who, why would you take out a home loan <laughs> with Schwartz? I, just crazy. It's crazy. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Nicole says Schwartz could buy a $1 million house in Minnesota for 6,000 a month. He should. He could buy a uh, over or he could buy Oh my God. He could buy. Yes. He could buy. Uh, he get the nicest house. Like so nice. And you're from there, sir. But I don't think Minnesota wants you back the way you're acting Schwartz. You gotta, you gotta get better, get smart to yourself, sir. So now he's like, Oh, I, I can't. Ariana took too long. Uh, and if I refinance, it'll be more than double. Uh, uh. Then Lala arrives. Oh, joy. And she's talking about her sperm donor party, which uh, Tom Sandoval calls a jizz party or something. That's your friend, Lala. That's your friend. That's the guy you want to stick up for. That's the guy you want to go to bat for. That's the guy you want to sell your soul for. And then she's like, hey, Lisa, it's me, Lala. What's up, bitch? Lauren from Utah, ho. Uh, can I use your house, that Rosé house, Rosa Villa, whatever the F it's called? Yo, 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 mountains in you, ha, ta, and cults, brah. Can I use that? Because I'm going to find my sperm donor party. And Lisa's like, oh, Lala, don't do that. You have to lay with a man you barely love, and he has to ejaculate inside of you and then leave you later. That is truly how children are born. You have to just find a random man or a man you pretend to love, sign a piece of paper. You can later tear up that paper, and he can find a younger version of you. But that is how the ejaculation must happen for childbirth. It's in the Bible. And Lala's like, Lisa, please please allow me to be excited about this and then she gets her candace dillard sorry um, apologies to candace dillard she's like allow me to be excited about this oh god i just i can't be excited about this i hope the best for you and your baby obviously but after all the shenanigans lala <laughs> has put us through this season i'm just i don't care now i don't want to deal with this i don't want to do it Pick your own sperm daddy. <sighs> okay, Jolene, be nice. <sighs> I just don't, I don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it right now, guys. All right. Oh, and I hate my husband, chill. I keep forgetting he brought me a beverage. Hmm. So Lisa's like, oh, fine, darling. I give you my blessing. I guess. I love that Lisa says she guesses when she gave her her blessing. Lala's like, please, Lisa. Bitch, I'm about to have a sperm donor baby, brah. Which, I mean, any way you want to have a baby is a miracle. That's beautiful. Good. Fantastic. Love it. But I, you know, it's so hard to invest in Lala's life or the things going on with her when she's being so callous and, and yucky. You know, so I, I wish the best for you. And I'm what's sure to be an adorable little girl. And obviously Ocean because she's so adorable. And I watch Lala's stories and I see little Ocean and she's just a wonderful, beautiful little miracle baby. But ugh, I just don't want to be happy for you right now. I'm feeling very petty. I'm in my petty era. Okay. So Lisa gives her blessing. Then we go to Ariana's house. Ariana's like, hey, what's up? And here comes Brock and Sheeta. Brock's like, hey, it's mom and dad. Hey, they. Hi. Yes. We're here. Sheena says your house is like shit. And Ariana's like, well, I mean, it's not, it's not my fault that my house is messy. It's mostly Tom's stuff. I mean, I'm, I know I'm moving soon because I put this offer down. And Ariana explains to them right when they arrive, Ariana's like, okay, listen to this. I spoke to Logan because Logan's my bestie. And when he was at Tom, Tom, he overheard Tom say that, uh, he's now not wanting to sell the house. Okay. Uh, and that's, and he wants to, or to, that he's not wanting to buy me out. He's wanting now to sell the house. And Ariana's like, that's what I wanted to do from the effing beginning. But he's the one that was like, no, I'm going to buy you out just because he's a dickhead. And I could have been moved in March if we just would have put it up for sale and done it the fair and equitable way and not had all this BS of, you know, living in pretend Harry Potterville, like he can actually afford this expensive house when we know how bad you are with finances, Tom. 
And Sheena and Brock are like, huh. And it's like, apologize. Now you all have to apologize to Ariana because you've all been talking shit about how she's to leave. She'd walk away. She's the one being difficult when really what she's told you all along is that they should just sell this house and that's what's going to work for both of them. But you all wanted to be like, you're kind of asking for it. I mean, it's gross the way they were willing to quickly villainize Ariana. The same way, no, I don't want to get, you know, but the same way women aren't believed about many things in life, the same way, the way they were acting, like you're asking for a bad time or him to treat you badly or to be miserable or depressed or um, his emotional abuse to continue because you didn't move. That's the same thing people say, well, you shouldn't have wore that. You shouldn't have been at that party. Why were you drunk? Why did you do that? Never putting the onus, the responsibility on the problematic man in the situation being Tom Sandoval. Blaming Ariana for wanting to keep her investment. For not wanting this man to be able to completely destroy her life and steal more than just her heart, but like her hard-earned money. They should all literally be putting out formal apologies on social media. I haven't seen a one, but they should. They really, really should because it was freaking gross. Yes, Lu <sighs> Lucy Furious, perfect, perfectly said, because we always expect women to bear the burden of being a bigger person. And that's the truth. I saw a little meme today that says, um, do your daughters like the, the biggest favor and teach them that it's not important for everyone to like them. They, they don't have to have everyone like them. I'm paraphrasing. Um, but it, here I found it. It says, do your daughters a favor and raise them to be okay with people not liking them. 150%. You don't have to be the bigger person. You don't have to, you do what's good for you. You will like, you don't always, you don't have to bow down. You don't have to, um, try to make everybody like you. It is going to be, ugh, it's going to be such a waste of your, your precious time on this earth. It's ridiculous. All right. So do your daughters a favor and raise them to be okay with people not liking them and do your sons a favor and show them Tom Sandoval and say, don't be like this fuck face. Don't do it. Don't do this. <laughs> so Brock and Sheena are like, Oh, wow. Wow. And then, um, after Aaron was like, yeah, that's what I wanted from the beginning basically saying, I told you bitches, um, why she, she, she really should have been like, why were you all so worried about me leaving the house when Tom was the one being a dickhead about it? You should have called him out. That's what really good friends would have done. Called his ass out and been like, Tom, sell that house, leave that house. You and Ariana sell it and you leave. You've done enough damage to Ariana, you know, let her stay in that house and you go find somewhere else to go have sex with your side chicks. Goodbye. See you later. Um, all right. Then Ariana says, Oh, we have her little confessional. She says, being right is hard sometimes, especially when it's always the case when it comes to Tom Sandoval, <laughs> because she knew this probably has to do with Tom not being able to afford the house on his own, but yet he didn't really think about that or he just did it to piss her off. You know, he's not financially sound enough to afford it. Then they talk about the podcast and how Tom is going through it, which oh, I love. I love, 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 I love. So he's going through it. Oh, sir, please stop. That is ridiculous. Sheena and Brock mention that Sheena's song Apples is coming out. Hey, PP Elias, how you like that? I like uh, cut you out like no narcissistic psycho cut you out like lipo that's a good line it's good line. i like it i like it apples is coming out uh the song that sheena wrote with the 27s about rachel and then she talks about how some of the lyrics are also about tom <gasps> oh my god tom is gonna be so mad he can't handle that sheena says she's trying to take she's like i'm trying to take a traumatic experience and turn it into a piece of art. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice for you guys? Isn't that nice that you can do that? Hmm. Huh. It's almost like what Ariana's trying to do with all these opportunities she's getting and then proving that she deserves because she's killing it. And she studied for this dance, singing, acting, all the things. But somehow you guys are like, oh, hmm. Hmm. You always find a problem. She should have told us. She should have told us sooner. Da -da -da. Okay. Good for you. Notice how Ariana's not saying anything about your songs. She's not hating on you for that, but you and Lala, I don't, she know. 
It was, no, it was from a Ferrari to a Jetta. <laughs> okay, so allegedly, Sheena and Brock came over to see if they could help Ariana with her space because it's so dirty. And Sheena's like, I don't like dirty stuff. I, I don't like it. It is a good song. I like that song, Jay. Uh, she's like, I don't like dirty. It's so dirty everywhere. And I agree. I don't like uh, it really dirty like that either. But Ariana's like, um, I'm going to be moving out soon and my stuff is in boxes. I'm not going to like unpack a box just to pack it up again. So I just kind of stack it up. All this other shit is Tom's. I don't touch it because it's his. And Sheena goes on to say, well, you know, I just want to help you because, you know, um, even though it looks like Ariana's life is going great and she has all these opportunities and a great boyfriend, it can still be difficult to deal with. Really? Wow. Tell Lala about that. Tell Lala how just uh, monetary uh, things, how that doesn't just cure everything and how she can still be you know, going through it and needs compassion and empathy from her alleged friends. Explain that to Lala. So even though it looks good and rosy on the outside and she's putting on a strong, you know, front, you know, she's really putting up like, I'm, I'm okay. She, it's probably really difficult for her. So explain that to Lala, please, 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 please. So Sheena wants to clean off the dining room table and other surfaces. And Ariana says, I mean, again, the stuff isn't mine. It's Tom. So I just leave it. And she was like, well, I got to clean it up. Ah, what is this? And then she's picking up like Tom's underwears and dirty stuff. And Ariana's like, oh, my God, Sheena, be careful. That Tom doesn't change his underpants very often. Oh, my God, be careful. And Sheena's like, that's OK. I take care of Brock. And Brock is just a dirty, dirty bastard. And Brock's like, hey, I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. Uh, that sounds more like Ken. <laughs> that accent sounded a little uh, Ken-ish. But Brock was like, eh, me, it's me, Brock. A guy forced as a strength for me. Me, me, I'm not that bad. Am I, Sheena? And then Brock makes a joke. Um, I think, what did he say? He said that uh, as they're cleaning... <laughs> Oh, well, Sheena said Tom and Ariana's house has always been a mess. So she was throwing shade and there were some pictures and it did look dirty. There were like empty cigarette packs. Shout out to Camel. Um, and Sheena's like, I'm just worried that Ariana is falling back into a dark place because of her house is too messy to have people over. <laughs> and every time Sheena is like this or very like type A or very like OCD, as she said, uh, it reminds me of the Gretchen Wieners character. She's like, I just have to keep it so clean. Otherwise, the whole world will fall apart. I'm just not, not going to deal with what's actually going on with Brock and how I'm so mad at him all the time because he keeps saying stupid shit and stealing my clothes ah! <laughs> and not understanding my OCD or my mental health journey. But I'm just going to clean, clean, clean. You know, I mean, I think we've all been. I know I've done that before. But Sheena definitely, but she pushes it down, allegedly. And then Brock tells Ariana, yeah, mom and dad are here to get your house in order. So they're cleaning. Sheena does find shoes on the dining room table. That is how Sandoval is. He'll put his dirty shoes on the dining room. That nest. Oh, my. Oh. Ooh. Ugh. His shoe. Your shoes. I go so far as you can't. Once if you get new shoes, like you get a box and you come home, you, you can't put it on a table or a counter. It's bad luck. My great grandma used to say it. I don't know what that originates from, but you can't put shoes like even brand new shoes in the bag in the box that you just bought on a table or a counter it is bad luck you don't do it and so i'm superstitious like that shout out to grandma francis um so i can't imagine dirty and this dude is dirty and he goes to dirty places and who knows where he's getting his love in the club these days so the bottom of his shoes that's where the real jizz party's at that's where you'll find the sperm donors the bottom of Tom's shoes, allegedly. He wants to make jokes. Uh, <laughs> it was so gross. Uh, 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 uh. So Sheena's just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Um, and then Brock says in an Australian accent, because <laughs> he's Australian or New Zealand. We don't know. Listen, we got a kid. Yeah, yeah, we got a kid. We've touched worse things before. <laughs> like literal shit. Ha, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he laughs at his own joke way too heartily. Way. He was like, <laughs> I was like, calm down, broke back Brock. Uh, that is, that's a lot for that. He's like, we touch, we have a kid. Yes. We got a daughter. We touch literal sheet. <laughs> it's no problem. We touch shit. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Brock. Brock. Um, Maya, oh, she was just the star of this episode. She was in so many scenes. She was sitting on the couch in this scene. She was sitting, laying on the floor, just watching. And she literally is the best thing about this show and this season and every scene of Vanderpump Rules. Oh, my God. Now my favorite scene is coming up. Oh, you guys, how much did you love the Tom Sandoval band practice scene where James Kennedy dragged his ass to hell and then left him there until... He ended up apologizing later at Tom Tom because he's like a bigger person. But don't be a bigger person to guys like this. Just don't. Just drag him to hell and then leave him on read and ghost them. I mean, Tom, I, you are pathetic. You yell at women, but you couldn't even buck up to James. Barely. How humiliating and degrading. It was humili I was, I'm humiliated for this man. Oh my God. It was, oh my God. He was, ugh. Thanks a lot, Rachel. Thanks a lot. It was embarrassing. I'm still, I'm still not over it, but I loved it. I loved it. So thank you, James Kennedy. I hate that you apologize to him later, but finally we have a man or I mean, somebody other than Katie and Ariana calling this dude out. Thank you. You know, you're welcome. Okay, so let's set the scene. Let's set the scene. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Yeah, smash that like. Thank you, Adam. Uh, if you haven't already. All right, so gold star for James. Yes, gold star for James. James and Hippie show up. Tom Sandoval is, is singing. You know, he's got that one song. And I don't know if it's, I don't know what songs he sings half the time because he destroys them. You can't tell anymore what they are. So it could be something he wrote himself. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't even know. Tom Sandoval can't find a note. He can't get delivered a note. He, the notes are just, they're evading him. He's just like, oh, I need this. He can't, you can't sing, sir. And you're touting yourself as a singer, the lead singer of a band. And the best, the second best part of the scene was when the, um, woman who sings in his band, who he always is bringing up as some kind of leverage or like, and they were mean to marry. And she's a woman. It's like, what? I'm sorry. What, is Mary, what does she have to do with this? I'm sorry, what? So a woman who could actually sing is trying to hit the note that Tom, the elusive note that Tom can't find. And she's like, she, because they, they, they say this, you know, you can shove feelings down, but your body will react. Your, the body always reacts. You can only push things down long enough. She has been sitting there with actual talent with skill as a trained singer having to be back up to this dude and listen to him and try to make him sound better. And she's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Because, you know, it being a creative, it's hard out here to find jobs. And finally her body was like, no, bitch, we are, we're going to show it. And she was like, so he was like, Ooh! okay, what is the lyrics of that song? I think I wrote it down because I always hear him singing the stupid song in his dipped out shirt. So this man has, this man is such a victim, but he has scan, he has scandable merch and you ruined dipped out. Dipped out is a wonderful term. I dipped, I dipped out from the nineties that we use that you've, you've ruined it. You've ruined it now. I used to love to be like, Oh yeah, they dipped. You're just ruining everything. That's good. So he's wearing scandable merch, which is a disgrace for him to have that. You can't be the victim of your own affair. And then you can't have merch for it and still be a victim. You dummy. Oh my goodness. So he's singing. And what is the, what is the frick is the song? I thought I wrote it down, but he's like, oh, oh, and so, oh. he's just hit, trying to hit that stupid note, but he can't find it. And he's like, oh, oh. and she's like, the poor woman. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Pamela. Tom singing makes cold place sound good. I mean, he makes anything sound good. Did someone say, was he singing from his journal? Probably, probably, probably. So he's just over there and he's like, oh, we don't want to sit and wait. Well, yeah. And it's like, we don't know. I always think like, we don't need no teachers. Leave them kids alone. But it kind of sounds like that. He's like, um, 
about we don't want to say wait. Yeah. You guys, it is so bad. Thank you, Pamela. Superstars is the song. Oh, what is that? We got, I got to hear it. I got to hear it now because the way he sings it. So Tom Sandoval, superstar. Sorry, guys. I have to hear this because, oh, is it his song? Is it, did he write this? Uh, oh, uh, let me listen to it. Oh, the beginning. It's the beginning of his podcast. I'm having like PTSD. We don't want to sit and wait for fun. Like, literally, was like, We don't want to sit and wait for fun. And he thinks he has bar, like, not like he's like Christina Aguilera. It. And the girl, the poor woman in his band, is like, Her body is just like, it's just, it's so gross. It's so gross. We don't want to sit and wait for love. Okay, so it's so bad. It's so bad. He's got dipped out. These poor people who like are trained in music, but they have to make a living. And so they're sitting there and he's like, yeah, do, 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 do. And he's got like a little rap. Like he's like, we don't want to educate. We just want to masturbate. Tom Sandoval and his dick. Put it wherever I don't quit. You know, he's just got his own little thing. He's doing it. And you're like, who, please, you guys, your money, your change can change the lives of children. Your money could go to such better things. I'm not saying, I don't want to be one of them people to like count people's money or, you know, tell you where you can spend it, but please don't pay for this man's band. If his, the rest of his band minus laptop boner, Jason want to go perform, pay for them, but him and laptop boner, Jason don't support this shit. He's a karaoke superstar. I guess. And he's taking it so seriously. And it is redunculous. You have to have like a little bit of self-awareness, sir. So he's practicing. We don't wanna. So cringe. So cringe. Um, he can't hit the notes. They're evading him. All the notes have ran away from him. They're like, no, no, no. He doesn't have possession of any notes. There are no song notes that this man has. Again, laptop owner Jason is there playing the drums, feeling super cool, but he's a dweeb, allegedly. Tom greets James and Hippie. James is like, oh, they're good. Hey, Tom, what's up? And Hippie's like, ah. And I'm like, Hippie, bite him. Bite him. They talk about Rachel's podcast. And Tom is leaning against a wall. He's like, this song's dedicated to my homies in the gangsta line. Like, he just going to ruin another song. Shout out to DRS1. He's going to ruin it. He's like, oh, I got Pearl Nichols on. Yeah. So they talk about Rachel's podcast. Um, James says, uh, you know, I kind of feel bad for Sandoval because he's also, James knows what it's like to be the topic of Rachel when she's on podcasts to talk about. Um, Tom then hilariously tells James <laughs> while leaning against the wall, wearing his dipped out Scandival merch that oh, I just realized that like, oh, Rachel Raquel, like, I cared about her way more than she ever fucking cared about me, dude. Dude. And then James says, "You oh, you think that? And Sandra replies, I fucking know it, dude. He's like a trailer park boy. This guy is so cringe. All right? <laughs> I fucking know it, dude. So now we're still on the victim. Now your mistress has screwed you over. Poor Tom. Poor Tom. It was supposed to be. Just the, I finally found the love of a lifetime. Yeah, I've never heard her speak, Jasmine, but I will say I follow her on social media just to see what they're doing. And it looks like she's just following him around. And she has a lady friend they've been hanging out with. And let's just say, be careful, girl, because it's going to be another Rachel Raquel situation. And maybe that's what they're looking for. But there's a third lady that they hang out with. And it looked a little sus. And they were celebrating her birthday, giving her smoochies. And I'm like, Oh, Tom is definitely banging her. And he don't care if you like it or not. Um, so Sandoval then says, um, I mean, I'm listening to this shit that's coming out of her mouth. Uh, and it's fucking bullshit. Uh. He says, she's so goddamn disrespectful. Uh. You can't call anyone disrespectful when you're the most disrespectful person on this damn show, sir. 
the way you behave, the way you continue to behave, when you cheat like this and have this torrid affair and are so continue to be so disrespectful and unapologetic, you can't say someone else is disrespectful just because your side hoe doesn't want to hoe with you anymore. That doesn't mean she's disrespectful. Oh my God, he's such a hoe. <laughs> he's so ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Sandoval says, I mean, oh, I'm listening to this shit that's coming out of her mouth. It's fucking bullshit. Duh. He says, it's so goddamn disrespectful. She used me. Uh. Sir, you used each other. You used each other. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was like, is this being for real? Ugh, we're going to have to listen to this. Uh, James says, um, James, like, um, Tom, I just want to put all this in the past after the breakup. Uh, I went to live my life, but it just seems to keep you know, coming back to haunt me. And uh, I, I don't want to sit here anymore with Tom. I don't want to talk shit about Rachel Raquel. And Tom's like, what do you, you don't want to talk shit about bitches? About, about bitches? We screwed You don't want to talk bitches? About, about bitches I screwed over? You don't want to talk about bitches? And James is like, no, I'm done talking shit. I'm done. Sandoval says, I mean, oh, I didn't get any fucking closure. Uh, closure? Did Ariana get closure? Did anybody? You selfish loser. <laughs> James says, fuck closure. She's working on herself, man. James has more empathy and is supporting Rachel Raquel more than Tom. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. Tom Sandoval says, yeah, she was working on her stuff when she broke up with you. She was selfish during that time. Oh, the, he's trying to pull James back in like, no, James. Uh, she was selfish to you too. Uh, let's commiserate together. Uh, let's make her the enemy. So I don't have to deal with this shit. Duh. And everyone will feel bad for me. He thinks we're stupid. He literally, this show and Tom Sandoval think we're stupid. Sir, we don't feel bad for you. I will feel bad for Rachel Raquel before I'll feel bad for you. I will never feel bad for you. You have proven what an ass hat you are time and time again. Every time you open your mouth, it's horrendous, really. You should be ashamed. You're not, but you should be. You should be. Uh, so he's like, yeah, she was selfish with you. You know, when she broke up with you. She was selfish during that time. Uh, she was selfish getting involved with me. Uh, what? You can't control your boner? You're 50. She said back in the day when she asked you to stop drinking. Uh, she did that and thought that you wouldn't be able to do it. Uh. So he's trying to rope James back in and also bring up James's drinking issues. Like he's so dirty. Tom Sandoval is so dirty the way he's trying to weaponize all this against James to make him an attack dog on Rachel because that's what he wants because Tom can't just take ownership and walk away and be like, well, yeah, I don't know why I ever thought that would work. Cheating on my life partner with her friend and oh man, I hope Rachel's well. He can't just walk away from these situations and take any ownership over his actions. He has to villainize the woman in the situation. They have to be the devil and it's poor Tom. And even James is like, ah, nah, nah, mate, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, she also said on the podcast that she was never, or, or no, I'm sorry. So, uh, that, so he basically tells James, yeah, Rachel said when she asked you to stop drinking, she told me during one of our minute long sex exploits that she did it, uh, with a thought that you wouldn't be able to quit drinking when she gave you an ultimatum to quit or you'll break up. And James comes right back at Sandoval. He's not buying this shit. He's like, okay, old man, I don't have time for this. Old man, take a look at my life. Go play some Neil Young. I don't have time for this. James comes back at Sandoval. And, well, she said on a podcast that she was never in love with you. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. She said a lot of things. And I was like, oh, oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. This is what I wanted this season to be about. Poning Tom Sandoval. Just make it, like calling his ass out. Making him look like the fool he is. Calling out his bullshit his blatant bullshit but so far we've gotten so little of that so it was nice to see him be like well yeah i mean she said that uh she was never in love with you so i mean yeah uh on that podcast and then sandoval says oh i know i heard that Duh. and then james says right and she also said that she got with you because she wasn't quite over me and i'm like oh james twist the knife twist the knife baby boy twist the knife dj james kennedy and then James reaches over and pats Sandoval on the shoulder in the most patronizing, perfect, beautiful way and says, so I wouldn't put much thought into that one, buddy. 
James then tells Tom Sandoval, I don't believe you guys were ever in love. I believe it was a fuck fest for six months. <laughs> and that's what it was. That's what it was. You need to be called out because that's what it was. You dumb dumb. Like you're not going to, you're, you're not going to convince us. We're not stupid, Tom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he says, no, you guys, hey, you guys were never in love. It was a fuck fest for six months. And Tom Sandoval says, dude, we would sit there for like five hours and talk. You know, I've never talked to a girl that much to get some action. Like I literally, I mean, I do talk a lot. It was mostly about me and myself. And Rachel would be like, and Lala said that I was stupid. And I would be like, you're not stupid. Oh, what do you think about my hair? Can you see any grays? What about my white nails? Do you like my mustache? What does it smell like? I haven't showered in days. Are these underwears crusty? And then James says, you would get horny, okay? You would get extra horny because you went getting it from Ariana. <laughs> he said extra horny. And then Tom comes right back and he's frustrated because he's like, James isn't taking the bait. We can't hate on Rachel Raquel. And that's what I want to do. I want to paint her as the villain now. Her and Ariana are evil bitches. And I'm the victim. She used me. Ariana used me. No one bought batteries. No one bought paper towels. No one refilled the toilet paper. Everyone's a bitch. They just come over here with their tits looking all good. What am I supposed to do? And he's frustrated. And he says, you have no idea what you're talking about, James. Uh, you have no idea. Tom tells James, I would literally go over to her house for like five to six hours. And if we had sex, it would only be a little bit, Tom. You should not be advertising that. I, there is no woman in this chat that wants you to talk to them or pretty much anybody for five to six hours or talk at them and then get diddled for what you say is uh, a little bit. A little bit was the exact quote. A little bit. That's like, that's a premature ejaculator. That is, a, that's some ED and no offense, all offense. To ED, shout out, but that's what's going on. He was jizzing in his pants, talking about himself and looking at young Rachel. They get, oh, I got a 28 year old. Oh. Yeah. And she was like, oh, Tom, did you, Tom, Lala said that you might have ejaculation issues, but Lala doesn't know everything. But I think that's what happened. Like he would get close to having sex to like, entering and then he'd be like oh. and she was like not again tom and he's like it happened again it's in my pants yeah mm -hmm. yeah he's an avid dry humper allegedly oh my goodness oh my goodness so he said and then we'd have sex for a little bit we would talk the whole time and then james pat sandoval on the shoulder again in a patronizing way that was so beautiful and says you're a liar though tom you're a liar and i'm like ah <laughs> Oh my God, send the a liar, send the and you are, and you are, and you still do, and you know you are. He's like, oh yeah, Tom, but you're telling me that, but you're a liar though, Tom, you're a liar, everybody knows you're a liar. And I was like, ah, in a very like British way, I loved it. Sandoval says, I'm not the, and then James says, but mate, that's just the facts. I mean, that's the facts though, you're a liar. Sandoval says, that's not the facts, that's not the facts. <laughs> <laughs> it's your opinion, which are not facts. Oh my God. Sandoval was, oh, he looked so ridiculous and I loved it. Thank you, Chickenhead PK Neely, for the super chat. Oh. <laughs> it was, it was so funny. It was so funny. It was so funny. Yes, a little bit too funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, oh, those are the facts. So he says, well, it's, I mean, mate, it's her opinion too. She said, <laughs> she said it. James then tells Sandoval, I mean, what you and Ariana had was true love, man. And Sandoval says, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> How could this be a 56-year-old man's conversation? <laughs> you don't know. James then tells Sandoval, mate, you looked at me dead in the eye for years telling me how much you fucking love that girl. And then Sandoval looks at James with like a death stare. Like he's like, he was so mad. Like, uh, stop saying true things. It doesn't fit my narrative. <laughs> James is like, hey, come on. You've been telling me for years, looking me in the eye, telling me how much you love that fucking girl. You're not going to convince me. Come on. It's ridiculous. You loved Ariana. 
Sandoval was death staring him. Like, how dare you reply with the truth, with the honesty of the past, without the Sandoval revisionist history, where Ariana was always really mean to me and a bully and treated me like shit and talked down to me. And I was stuck with her and I couldn't leave or she was going to hurt herself. <laughs> That's what he wants us to believe. And we're like, sir, but you're a liar. So every comeback for Sandoval is like, okay, you can say that, but you're a liar. Like, and liars lie. So how can I believe anything you say? Because you're such a liar. You're doing liar stuff. Sandoval then was like, oh, God, I did love her. Uh. I did. Okay, fine. And then James says, it's like you forget. It's crazy, man. And then Sandoval tells James, shut up. <laughs> so James is just literally like, man, it's like you forget what it, what happened. And then Sandoval, he just, he cannot debate. He can't have a normal conversation. He can't have any kind of civil discourse, even though he's definitely not yelling at him the way he yells at women and he's not as dismissive, but he does say, shut up. <laughs> that What? What in the kindergarten is happening? And apologies to kindergartners. I mean, shut up. My nephew, Frankie, who is six years old, would have a better comeback than that. Give me a break. Uh, James accused Sandoval of rewriting history, which he does in his mind. And tells him to have fun with his fucking band. He's like, you know, mate, you rewrite. His, have fun with your fucking band. He then tells Sandoval that I'm not opening for your band at the El Rey because I've moved on to bigger and better things like Coachella, bitch. James was just DJing at Coachella. Whether you like James or not, he has surpassed Sandoval in the music career, in the career in general. Coachella. That was one of his dreams. He made it happen. Oh. Okay, so he's like, I'm not opening for your band. It's, I know it's Australian still, but he's like, I'm not opening for your band at the El Rey because I've moved on to big and better things, okay? And then James points to Sandoval's band where they're practicing, sitting around, counting, asking each other, how long do people live on average? Because this is, this is really long being in this band. This is like a really long time where they're just contemplating the meaning of life as they sit there and wait for the man who can't sing come over and shout into the microphone with no notes and get paid pennies, allegedly. So James, uh, <laughs> he points at Sandals band when they're practicing and says, this is a joke to me. All right, I gotta go by. This is a joke to me. I gotta go by. And Sandals like, a oh, joke, but it is a joke. It's a joke. Not the skill of the people in the band because clearly they got skills, not necessarily to pay the bills, but they got skills. Um, but the joke is Tom Sandoval leading a band. These people should all have a career in, in music and Tom should it because he has no musical talent. <laughs> so it's like, ugh, just think of all the people who like work their whole lives and really have talent and work hard. And then he's just sitting there like, I'm the lead singer. Ah, ah. So James is like, this is a joke. I got to go by. James says he's, uh, he's waiting for Sandoval to get a clue, but he's not sure he ever will. And then cut to James in like a little confessional diary. And he says, I can see Tom now. He'll be 75 years old on sunset at a karaoke bar with his little walker. Like, boom, the flute comes out of his pocket, the penis flute. Okay. And he's like, oh, I used to play this on national television because he's living in the past. Basically saying Sandoval needs to grow up and stop being the Lulu and living in the past. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. Jay says, such a great show. Jolene, I appreciate that. So as James is walking away with his back turned to Sandoval, that's when Sandoval decides, I'm a cis male. I'm going to buck up. So Sandoval, like the coward he is, he tells James, oh, go push some buttons on your laptop. Bah. And then James says, what did you say? What'd you say, Sandoval? What'd you say? What'd you say? Sandoval goes, you heard me. Sandoval, like, you heard me, like, you heard me, you heard me. He turns to the side, like, what'd you say? You heard me, you heard me, you heard me, you heard me, because he knows, like, Sandoval, let's be honest, you, we don't advocate violence except for when we advocate violence over here. The only fight we've ever seen you get in was with Jax, and you sucker punched him. You punched him while he was sitting down. You lunged at him and jumped through the air to punch him. And I'm not saying Jax didn't deserve it, but you had plenty of opportunity to, like, fight him man to man when he was standing up but you were like mm! <laughs> and like your fist come on bro come on come on so Sandoval was like you heard me 
You remember James like, no, no, what did you say? <clears throat> what did you say? Say it to my face. And then Sandal says, go, go push some buttons on your, on, on your laptop, on your Apple. Like, uh, laptop boner Jason does or doesn't do during the podcast. Allegedly, just go push some buttons. My, my, my fucking laptop. He's like stuttering. He's sweating. It's dipped out t-shirt. It's pitted out. He's so nervous. Go push, push some buttons on your, your fucking laptop. And then James even knows, like, look at this little chicken shit. He's like, "Mm mm-mm. So James is like, okay, okay, (laughs) okay. Sandoval says, don't call my band a fucking joke on. And then James starts laughing, like, all right. He turns around and says, thank you, Sandoval, and continues to walk out with Hippie. And I was just like, Hippie, bite his dick off. Bite his dick off. Bite it off. Thank you, Artis, for the super chat. Artis says, hello, Jolene. Hope you're having a good evening. I hope you are having a good evening, too, Artis. Thank you so much for the super chat and the kind words. It was so beautiful. James like, say it's my face. And Sam was like, uh, go push some fucking buttons on your laptop. Don't talk about my fucking band. He's like whispering, basically. And then James is like, <laughs> okay, loser. Bye. See you later. I'm going to go perform at Coachella now. I'm going to push my buttons and make more money than you'll ever make doing this. Okay. Okay. And he walks out. Okay. Then we go from this. Yes. Such a tough guy, Courtney says, with your pearl necklace and purses. Ooh, don't scare me. Don't scare me, Sandy. Don't scare me, Sandy. Sandra D. So we go from this freaking wonderful scene. I mean, we had... Katie Maloney had a scene this year with Tom Sandoval and Tom's kitchen where she just destroyed him and it was so beautiful. And now we have a James Kennedy one and I'm just like, we don't have enough of these. And I thought this season would be what this is about is really going after, um, Tom. I mean, the person who fractured the group, there's so many reasons to go after Tom and Tom, but somehow here we are watching the women fight with each other. It's just a mess. Um, and watching, you know, uh, production and Lisa Vanderpump try to protect Tom from any responsibility. So it was a beautiful scene. We go from that to the sperm donor party. Yay. 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 <sighs> Yay. Yay. Did you guys like this scene? Lala's having people over at Lisa's. This is what the scene was. How excited. Lala's having a sperm donor party. Oh, yay. Heavy on the sarcasm there. It's outside. She has it catered. She says she's going to let people come and eat, fill their tummies. And then they're going to play pin the sperm on the vagina. It's a game. Pin the tail on the donkey. Here's the poster board for it. Yay. Yay. Lisa Vanderpump looks disgusted, as anyone would be. No wonder Lala and Sandoval get along. This is their great sense of humor. Awesome. Thank you. (sighs) Lala's excited because she's only a couple hours away from choosing her baby daddy from binders with the help of her friends. People are invited. They're going to pick from three binders. One, two, and three. Bachelor number one, bachelor number two, bachelor number three. It'll tell you characteristics about them, but not like specifics where you can identify them or dox them. Yay. So not their identity. Yay. Okay. So boring. But then Allie has a scene where she pulls Katie aside. And Allie's like, hi, I know I wasn't at the Foxfire. But how's everything going? I heard some stuff with you and Lala and everything. What's happening? Allie was just like, stir in the pot. Mm, hey, do, 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 do. Um, <clears throat> Hype my husband, Chell, coming in with some interesting knowledge. He says, I haven't been in nursing school for a long time, but I think you pinned the sperm on egg, on an egg sandwich, Hype my husband, Chell, which is traveling down the uterus. If it's pinned on the vagina, it's not going to make it. Don't tell Lala that. Don't tell her that, Chell. That's how her baby will be made. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? But thank you, Hype My Husband Chell, for the um, nursing school update. Samantha, a lot of people have 
said this. I've seen this a lot. Samantha Stevens. Oh my God, the bewitched. I love Samantha Stevens said, I didn't like how Lala kept saying this baby will be something she will solely own. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like, I understand that you don't want to go through another custody thing. It must be very difficult. I empathize. Unlike you, I can empathize with you even when you're being a jerk face. Um, but yeah, it just, there's some, it just doesn't quite sit right either with like, I just want it to be mine, but I get it. But it's the way she said it isn't. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on from that. So Allie's talking to Katie and she's like, Hey Katie, what's going on? And Katie's like, Oh, Hey, what's up? Yeah. I did come to this thing. Allie's like, Oh, so girls night was okay. You're okay. Katie's like, yeah. Okay. Ellie says, well, um, when we were at paintball, it just seemed like Lala was saying that you were miserable all the time and you get upset really easily. So, and I'm like, oh, Allie, just delivering. So interesting that Allie was not at the Foxfire Girls Night, but she is stirring the pot. And I love it because someone has to hold Lala accountable because she's just talking shit behind Katie's back, saying she's unhappy, miserable, getting upset. It's like, mm, I think that's you. I think that's you. I think that's you. Okay, because you can you can fake the softness, this toxic positivity that I, you're not even pulling that off. I think it's you, ma'am. And then Katie's like, uh, Lala was saying I'm miserable. Huh? Well, and I get mad easily. I'm definitely not miserable. And getting upset about things easily like I'm not. And then Allie says, oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty clear you're not miserable. Katie replies to Allie that she's tired. I'm just tired of the same dumb shit getting brought up to me over and over. Katie then wonders in her confessional, she was like, when did Lala start talking shit behind my back instead of just doing it to my face? And I'm like, oh, girl, Katie, Lala is like that. Lala can't. She's that type. I'm starting to believe she cannot be happy for other people. She can't. She's got to be the star. She's got a lot of jealousy. And we see that when she tells her reasoning for allegedly being, you know, um, upset with Katie. Like she has no good reason to be mad at Katie. I don't know why she has to put down other people to be soft. How does that make you soft by putting down your friends or being like, oh my God, my friends are so miserable, but I'm soft. So I can't be around them. I'm sorry, what? Uh, okay, then... Mid sperm party, we get Tom Sandoval uh, at home, as if this wasn't scary enough, what we've already seen. He's at home with a knife holder on his leg, looking through, I, like he's a pirate, I have no idea, sitting there. And then Tom Schwartz walks in to Ariana's house. I'm going to call it Ariana's house from now on. He's sitting in a chair with a knife on his leg. In a knife holder, Maya's there again, making the scene tolerable. Maya, the beautiful dog. And then we see Craig. You guys, this is Tom's alleged new assistant. He comes from Schwartz and Sandy's. They show, where did you meet Craig? And it's like, oh, Craig interviewed to be a bartender last year. We almost didn't hire him because he had a mustache. And I'm starting to believe that everything about Tom Sandoval is plucked from Craig. Tom Sandoval, Tom Sandy Butt is not original. He's an energy vampire. He always steals style from people. He steals all the things and then he just Fs it up because he can't pull it together. So Craig, oh, I just closed something. Oh, I received, or I achieved my move goal just by sitting here and moving my arms and talking um, in an active way. Thanks, Apple Watch. So I kind of think that Tom is a Craig wannabe at this point. They're wearing matching outfits. Tom recently, remember he was like playing around with having, being tatted and wearing like shirts or like fake tats. I think he wants to be Craig. I think he wants to be Craig. And then Craig's like, yeah, Craig had the tightest shorts I've ever seen. Man or woman. He, his shorts were so tight. And he walked over and he was just like. I'm going to get something out of the kitchen. Isn't it funny how, let's ponder this, will you? Tom's view of women. When Tom had a woman as his assistant, she was expected to clean the house. Tom has a man as an assistant. He hasn't picked up a fucking thing. Why? Why? I don't know. I just, 
when I'm watching, I'm like, okay, but he has a new assistant and Anne had to pick up all the stuff, but Craig don't. Okay, Craig. Okay, Craig. So Craig's over there. He's like, Hey, I've been over here a lot. And we're like, Craig, go away. Um, but I think I heard that Craig is a singer too and can actually sing allegedly. Don't quote me on that. So Sandoval might be single white, single white manning him instead of single white femaleing him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just wrote that? Okay, Judy. We see each other. Very interesting. The house is a, a sty. And we know Craig has been around because Craig was introduced last episode. So Craig don't have to pick up, but the lady has to pick up. Oh, interesting. Tom Sandy, but okay. So Schwartz is there, you know, Craig, Tom's assistant doesn't have to clean. Okay. Um, I think he tried to steal Craig's entire identity. Look, alleged swag, everything from him. Craig tells Schwartz that he's at Sandoval's more than he's at his own home. They might be having sex. I'm just putting it out there. I think they might be hooking up. They're having threesomes, foursomes, fivesomes, P. Diddy freak offs. I don't know. I don't make the rules, allegedly. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Um, they're wearing matching outfits. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Sandoval then tells Schwartz uh, he has his leg knife and he's going to start working on cutting Maya, the dog, in half. So he gets half and Ariana gets the other because they split everything, which is not funny. And it's not funny because it's coming from him who definitely has all the potential to be a serial killer with this personality, his deluluness, the way he acts, it's creepy and weird. And I'm just so happy that Maya is no longer in this man's presence and Ariana has left. And Maya is around people that are mentally sound and good people. And in New York, she was around Brad and now she'll be in her new house in LA. And that was so freaking gross, Tom. Tom, you nasty. You are so disgusting. Thank you, Nicole, for the super chat. Nicole says, you make my dad love your recaps. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you so much. But this dude is making jokes about cutting his dog in half. You mean the dog you didn't care for? The, the dog that you left uh, in that room with the poker sticks and stuff and then blamed Ariana when she didn't think that would be a room that the dog was going to go in? Because last I checked, dogs don't open doors. I mean, I guess you can train, you can train a dog to ring a bell and all these things, but Maya couldn't open doors until then. And you let her in there and you let her be in there for hours and didn't check on her. And there was a whole bunch of things that could have killed her and almost did. It just leads me to believe that this man is a psycho. Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. It's just a gross joke to make, especially so soon after Maya was literally on death's door and Ariana had to go take her to the emergency vet and have, um, you know, she had to have procedures to get the little uh kebab sticks out of her it's gross tom tom you're gross Ugh, i'm looking at craig i need to pull a picture of tom he's just disgusting and he thought it was funny i'm gonna cut her in half <laughs> tom you're not good at jokes you're not you're not likable you can't pull off anything there are certain things, and also like a dog, an animal harm joke, you better be fucking likable as shit. There are professional comedians who've worked for 50 years who couldn't pull that off. You don't have anything. People already believe you would hurt a dog. They already believe you did that shit to Maya to piss off Ariana, that you didn't give a shit. You, uh, you want to pretend you care about Maya now? Where, where were you when the Charlotte died? Your other dog passed away. That adorable dog that we saw on season after season of Vanderpump Rules. Where were you? Oh, yeah, you were having sex with Rachel Raquel when Ariana came home early from her girl's trip and was distraught, devastated because you lose a fur baby and it's like the worst thing. And she was acting like any human would. And you had not human reactions. You were like, I better go out and have sex with Rachel Raquel. 
when your little puppy poo was sick and dying. Dude, he's gross. He's so gross. He's gross. He's gross. Let's see what you guys are saying because I just, I hated this. Uh, Katie says, narcissists only desire to serve their own narrative. They use people and animals. Not sorry. He is what he is. I mean, again, I, at first, when people were first diagnosing him, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, I think it gets over diagnosed, overused. Everyone's a narcissist these days. And then I thought we had that epiphany a couple of lives ago where I was like, you know what? No, maybe there just are a lot of freaking narcissists out there, honestly, because this dude fits the bill allegedly. No matter what Dr. Drew and this TV doctor dumb says, um, this dude, all the things, he checks all of the boxes. Yeah, wearing a knife, dog threats. Your dog just recently almost died when your other dog was like sick and unfortunately passed away. You were out there having an affair, literally partying that night. Oh my gosh. Come on, Bravo. You, you can't save this idiot, Lucinda. You're right. And Pamela says, I can clinically diagnose and he is a textbook narcissist. I mean, yup. It looks like it. I mean, it looks like it. It's gross. He's gross. He's so gross. He's so gross. So after he makes that dog, even Schwartz is like, oh, gosh. Oh, goodness. But again, doesn't check him the way he should because they're both man babies and twinsies, you know. Um, then after his creepy, murderous little joke, uh, Sandoval propositioned Schwartz to be his roommate. Oh, my God. You pathetic. You oh, it's so pathetic, sir. You're 60 years old. You can't have a roommate right now. You have enough money. You shouldn't need a roommate. That's how bad you are with money. You can't afford that house. It's too much house for you. Lisa Vanderpump said it. Tom Schwartz said it. At, everyone at home is saying it's too much house for you. You can't keep it up unless you have a woman working for you. And you don't have the money. You're bad with money. You don't have money. You no good with the money. Schwartz is like, no, nah, dude, uh, the optics on that are horrible for me. And Tom's like, no, oh, it's good for you. Short says, oh, okay, let me humor it. What, what are we talking? Because Tom's like, I'm not going to keep the house now unless I get a roommate. Duh. It should be you are. And Short is like, all right, humor me. I'll humor you. Whatever. What are you talking? Sandoval says, well, uh, Short is like, what would rent be? And he goes, six. Six thousand? And Short says, I'm not paying six thousand on something I'm not building equity on. That is like stupid. I'm not doing that. This is your house. You're building. What do you, why would I pay that much? And Tom's like, but you pay $4,500 now, Tom. Come on. Uh. And Schwartz says, nope, I can't in good conscience do it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I cannot put six k towards something I'm not getting a return on. I'm not building equity in here. And this just shows you how much Sandoval doesn't care if he fucks over anyone in his life. Obviously not his life partner, Ariana, and obviously not his supposed alleged best friend, Tom Schwartz. Because he wouldn't care. He doesn't care about financially and socially fucking over Schwartz. He doesn't care how it looks for Schwartz. And he doesn't care that this would be the worst investment possible. It wouldn't be an investment. It would be him throwing his money away so Tom Sandoval can keep his dream house that he can't afford, that he already took equity out of, that he has defiled and defaced with his nasty jizz parties that he has. Mostly in his jeans, allegedly, or Adidas track pants. Oh my goodness. He can't have the house. The whole thing will be decorated in penis flutes. It's not going to be good. Penis flutes and garbage and random hair extensions. It's not cute. It's not cute. So then Tom says, yeah, we could, we would, uh, we could, uh, we would get a loan. And Schwartz says, we, we're going to get a loan. Tom says, yeah, we would get a loan together. And then Schwartz says, oh, I don't like that. They will look at us like two nincompoops. Uh-huh. Yeah, we will. And Tom's like, no, I don't know what Nimco poops are. So Sandoval had propositioned his friend with the worst, the worst thing ever, worst living situation, would just work for him. Again, using him as a tool and getting what he wants, as we mentioned in the narcissist handbook. And Schwartz being like, no, bro, I'm like, I'm not that stupid. Sorry. Ugh. So then we're back at the sperm party. Oh, yay. And basically the only good scene was Katie finding out that Lala is a shit friend talking behind her back. And they play 
pin the sperm on the vag. And Lala gives a speech. And she's like, I just, I just love all you guys. And I'm just so happy that you could be here and help me pick my sperm donor. And I'm just making the best of the situation. I didn't think it was going to be like this. Okay. And there's one thing. I may not be good at a lot of things. I might stab my friends in the back. I might be super jealous. I might fuck your boyfriend. I might get with Randall, BJ's for PJ's, and then say, I didn't know when I knew. But you know what? I know I'm a good mom. Okay. And then her mom's like, oh, you're a good mom. Kissy, kissy. Uh, and then she's like, all right, let's play it. And then, of course, Lisa goes. And she's like, hey, Lala, you're going to have more fun making your baby than I did. Because <laughs> I had to have sex with Ken. That's the joke. Oh, darling, that's the joke, Ken. <laughs> Gross, but <laughs> nasty. I let him have it once a decade. <laughs> oh, Lisa. And then Sheena's really good at pinning sperm. Right up in the UD. And Sheena's like, because <laughs> I'm good at sperm. She's very happy. And then Lala reads through the binders and she's like, all right, bachelor number one, here's the donors you can pick. And the first one, Sheena's like, it's perfect. And the saddest part of this is that Ariana was so excited for Lala. She was so like genuinely appearing to like support her. Knowing this big thing in, you know, Lala's life and knowing now that she's just been on this like shit talking tour and being just cruel and just for no reason about Ariana's situation and just so jealous and petty and bitter and all the gross things you don't want to be. So knowing that now and watching Ariana so supportive, it was just, it was sad. It was really sad because you're like, oh, look at Ariana. So happy for freaking Lala and Lala is hating on her literally every second she gets she's just hating on ariana for something and like victim blaming her <sighs> we're like yay lala your sperm party yay great Ugh. I'm just so over this <laughs> she's not been supportive to ariana in any way and if anything she's rewriting history to make ariana look like a villain like sandoval does going ariana was never there for me i have been there for my bitches my bitches and my hoes I have been there 10 toes down with my whole chest, bitch. I was there. Where were they for me? And then you can go to Coca Macoca. You can go to Christina Coca's anywhere, any of her accounts, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, go follow her, show her all the love. She's doing amazing work just showing how Lala is a liar. No, you're lying. Here's where Ariana was here for you. Here she is again. Look over here. Oh, it's like, I think her video is called Lala versus reality. And reality is winning, Lala. You're losing. Uh, oh, my goodness. Okay. Then we have a scene um, at James and Allie's house. And they, oh, they're not on the same page about babies and marriage. Allie's like, I'm young. She is young. What is she, like 23, 25, 28? I think she's 28. She's like, I haven't really thought about it. I don't know. I mean, I don't. It's not like set in stone. I haven't never been like, I just want to be a mom. Okay. Okay. Right? They're chef's kiss. She puts this stuff together. Go follow. If you don't already, you guys probably already follow her. Um, she does such a fantastic job with just, oh, Lala says this? Well, boom. Here's the lie. And there's the lie. And there. <laughs> so it's perfect. Yes. Thank you, Linda. She's 28. And she's like, I don't know. I mean, I think I want to get married. But she's like, I haven't really actually, I don't have a Pinterest board with my rings. I don't, I've never... I don't even think she said she thinks she wants to get married. She said, I haven't really thought about it. It's never been a priority to me. And then she also says, as far as kids, like, she's like, it's beautiful. Some of my friends know they want to be moms, but I, I don't know. Maybe, I think, possibly. And James is like, <laughs> and then he cries. And he's like, ah, I just don't want it to turn into Rachel Raquel where I waste five years of my life and it's fucking nothing. And I'm like, slow your roll, James. Slow it down. Lord Dan. Uh, they've only been together a year and a half. She's got plenty of time to do the baby making if she wants to. Um, and she's like, I love you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love you, but I can't answer you right now. And I think that's, you know, when you date someone younger, that's kind of the, I mean, that's going to happen. Uh, she's not in a hurry. She doesn't know. 
uh, it is definitely a deal breaker for lots of people. If people don't want marriage and kids and someone does, yeah. But I don't know if now's the time to wave the, the white flag of like, all right, we give up. And it is interesting the way James is talking because he's like, oh, I never thought love was going to be like this. When I was young, I thought you'd meet someone you fought. It's like, that's a Disney story. That's a fair. I get it. I get it because they really push that shit on us. Like, that's love and you'll know and you'll find it. Well, you might find 10 loves. You might be married 16 times. You, he has to go listen to the Baz Luhrmann Wear Sunscreen. Remember that song? It was like based off a speech a wonderful woman gave at a college or high school, I think college commencement speech she gave. And it was it was just like, basically don't, all these instances of, you know, obviously wear sunscreen, but all this great life advice that it's like, you know, um, be kind to your, your siblings are the first, you know, people that people that will be there for you. Not for everybody. I mean, some people's siblings suck. I love my brother, but I get some people have shitty siblings, but like get to know your parents. You never know when they'll be gone for good. There's all this like good advice. And I think it was, um, maybe you'll marry, maybe you won't, maybe you'll have kids, maybe you won't, maybe you'll dance the funky chicken on your 50th wedding anniversary, whatever you do, don't, I wish I could quote the exact thing, but there's some good, but basically like, you know, some, you don't have to know what you want right away. And some of the most interesting 40 year olds still don't know what they want was one of the quotes or what they're going to do with their life or something. And, um, you know, not everyone is going to get married. Not everyone's going to have kids. Not everyone's going to have one marriage. Not everyone's going to have two. Some people are going to have five. Some people are going to have none. And you just have to, you just got to roll with it. Don't have all these expectations because life will throw things at you. Yeah. Uh, dance the funky chicken. Like it's, and one of my favorite lines from it is like, um, uh, yeah, dance no matter where you are. You know, just always dance. Your body is like your greatest instrument you'll ever get like, don't take it for granted. Don't put it down. And then he says, well, she says in her speech, do not read beauty magazines. They will only make you feel ugly. And that is so true. And this, I mean, this came out in 1999, I think. So obviously beauty magazines are still a thing, but that can be said for like Instagram. Do not follow Instagram beauty accounts. They will only make you feel ugly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so wear sunscreen. The Baz Luhrmann version is uh, is a good song that I like to I like to play every now and then to remind myself. But these two will figure it out. I don't know. James, the thing that scares me is that James is saying that I just don't want to start all over. It's like there's going to be lots of start overs in life, and don't think of it that way. It just seems. And it's probably because he didn't take enough time. Maybe I don't know to process his previous breakup. And all the stuff with Rachel Raquel. Uh, so yeah, so maybe there's some unprocessed trauma from that and then his parents and their relationship and his own like addictions and things. But it seems like he really wants to create like this family and these kids. It's like, but do you ever ask yourself, are you ready for that? I mean, I don't know. Is James like 30, 32, 33, something like that? Uh, so there's still time for him as well. But if that is something he wants soon, then you need to find someone who um, wants to do that soon. But it's only been a year and a half. Blue Bevy says James and Ellie both make good points. I'm rooting for their happiness, but they're clearly, yeah, they're not on the same page. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, R. McLaren says, I have really enjoyed your recent videos. My favorite moment of VPR last night, the technician trying to, did I miss that? Plug his ears when, I, we talked about the uh, woman singer. I forget her name. Uh, apologies to the talented woman that has to perform with him. So sorry. Her face going like that. But I missed it. I'm going to have to go back and watch because I didn't see that part. So, um, so yeah. See, I guess, I don't know. Um, it, it, the, again, it's subjective. Like for some people, a year and a half is like, let's go. We got to figure this shit out. For me, I mean, me and my husband child dated from when I was 29, almost 30 to 35 is when we got married when I was 35. So, but again, I was living in LA and I wasn't in a hurry. Um, and I also just like Allie wasn't ever someone who asked any of my friends. I never had like my wedding dress picked out. I never had a ring I wanted. I ended up, 
uh, we got rings that we exchanged, but we eloped. It was so low key. It was like perfect for us because I never wanted a big wedding, nothing. And I actually wear my great grandma's wedding ring. My mom gave it to me. And um, my husband, obviously, he's like, wear whatever you want, you know? Uh, and this, you know, I like this beautiful little ring because it makes me feel close to her. So I'm far more into like, not that I can't be a posh bitch at times, but I like um, very sentimental things. And I really loved my grandmas. And so it makes me feel close to them wearing my grand, my great grandma, Francis, wearing her, her wedding ring. So um, one day I do want to get it like built up only because it's so, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's so thin. I feel like it's going to break. Um, so I want to get it like, I don't know much about jewelry and I'm not asking Kyle Tran, but I think there are a lot of women out there who, a lot of women who look forward to their wedding day and they make Pinterest boards and they love it. Or there's women in between who are like, I want a wedding, but I, you know, and there's a lot of women like me or Allie who are like, well, I, I never really put a lot of importance on that day. It's, you know, I just, I want, I, I knew I liked to be in relationships. I wanted to find my life partner, my person, but I didn't care about the actual, um, oh, your grandma's name was, I love Francis. Yeah, so it's my great grandma. She was wonderful. You will love to Jamaica. I love Jamaica. I've been to the grill so many times <laughs> when I was younger and I loved it. Oh, back in my party days, party days. Oh, yes, I think you're right, Jen. The singer is Maddie. Yes. Um, so they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. They're, they'll figure it out. Um, but eventually there comes a point where you have to, you do, those are two core things. The kid thing is really, that's a deal breaker. If one, if one doesn't want kids and the other does, either someone has to concede and just give up their dream of having kids or uh, you have to break up and marriage. I mean, marriage as well, you know, so they'll figure it out. Uh, okay. So now we're going to Tom Tom's and uh, their first brunch uh, Schwartz and Sandoval, all, everyone arrives. Uh, Tom obviously arrives Sandoval in his woman's power suit Cause he just can't stop appropriating our woman culture. There he is. He got like, he had like two purses. It was so ridiculous. I was like, Tom, please stop. Oh, here was little Maya. Look at sweet little Maya looking at Schwartz when Tom Sandy, Butt had that making that knife joke going Schwartz, get me out of here, bro. Get me out of here, bro, bro. I don't know if this is the same guy. Because you're blonde hair. You might be a new guy. Can you save me? Are you related to my mom? She has blonde hair. Get me out of here, bro. Bro, get me out of here. This dude is making inappropriate comments. So I do the Tom Tom brunch. All the ladies are trying the food. Tom Sandy Butt sitting by with Tom. And um, uh, let's see. James comes up and apologizes to Tom Sandal, which I wish he wouldn't do. But he said he talked to Allie. And he, uh, there are bigger things going on in his life than arguing and fighting with Tom Sandoval. So of course, James had to be the bigger person because Tom Sandoval continues to be a tiny, 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 pathetic man. Sandoval's like, I feel better. Oh, thanks for that. Duh. While standing there in his woman's power suit, pearl necklace in his purse. Lala and Katie are talking to Schwartz. Ugh. I'm telling you, Lala and Schwartz will eventually have very disappointing sex. I'm just, I don't want this to be true. I just am a psychic, okay? And I know these things. I didn't make them true. I can see the future, allegedly, all right? They will have very disappointing sex one day. So Schwartz is there and Lala's like, you look like dad bod Ken, bitch. And he's like, I don't have a dad bod. And then um, Lala says, well, it's the hottest of Ken's. And Schwartz says, you know, he doesn't have a dad bod. And I'm like, did she just say he was the hottest? Could this be another reason Lala's turning on Katie? Because she secretly wants to get down in the DMs with Schwartz? Ugh. I, I don't know what's going on, but I think she is horny for Schwartz. She's extra horny, as James Kennedy would say. You're just extra horny. Yeah. But for real, they keep making these comments, like sexual, like, or you're attractive or hot. And I'm like, what? Huh? What? This is like the worst rom-com I've ever seen. With that, like, played out trope of, like, they hate each other. They're mortal enemies. Become lovers. Ugh. 
Natasha says, I so agree with you. If you notice this episode, Schwartz keeps saying poppin and he's never used that. Oh, good catch. But that is such language that Lala used. Oh, God, so true. It's so true. And JL says her persona is it is It must be exhausting for her because we're exhausted watching it. The flip floppiness. She's getting a lot of cardio flip flopping this season and mostly flopping. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Sunny Shine says, is he her baby zaddy? Mm -hmm. But they will. Unfortunately, they will have disappointing sex. There will be a scene, a time next season because you know they're going to give us a next season just to punish us. And, uh, yeah, what's popping team money? You better bust a cap of sperm in me. Like, I feel like she's going to come at him like that. He's about to bust a cap of sperm in me. So they make this joke and Katie's just like, ha ha ha. Okay, cool. Uh, then the girls are all eating the ladies. And this is when Lala says, oh, what's up, bitches? Katie and Al, what were y'all talking about at my sperm party? And Allie's like, oh, okay, we're going to go there. And Katie goes, well, Allie told me that you said I'm miserable and I get mad very easily. And Lala's like, ah, I didn't say that. And Sheena pops right in. She didn't say that. She didn't say that. She didn't say that. I was like, Sheena, please. Please, Sheena, please. Sheena, please. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, my goodness. She didn't say that. And then Lala turns to Allie and says, did you say verbatim that I said she was miserable? <sighs> like it matters. You said unhappy. Cut to her saying unhappy. Same, same. Unhappy, miserable. Neither of them are happy. Neither of them are good to say about your friend behind their back. Yep. Neither of them are good to throw her under the bus because you're having a soft period. Because you need a reason for being so flip-flop anonymous. Oh my God, I'm so, I am so sick of Lala. <laughs> like I can't, she's just, uh, I had such high hopes for her. And I am just, and the way she's just doubling down and going, I don't care, and blaming the fans as if we're just making up lies about this chick. Like that's what we want to do. Just because she didn't get to be the star and nobody cared about her breakup because we knew it was inevitable, no offense, all offense. And your dude was gross and your relationship was gross. And we weren't invested because- he wasn't on the cast until you dragged him on there and made us watch Pickleball. Oh, I digress. Uh, Lala says that, you know, that is not the word. That is not the word I used. And she never replies. She never said that. Sheena just can't stop. Oh, so Lala actually said unhappy, but it's the same. Lala tells Katie, I was going to have a conversation with you because I feel that you're not in a happy place right now. And Katie says, who's not in the happy place? The lady who's crying over sperm or the lady who's moving on, living her best single life, having the best hair, makeup, fashion, and casual sex of her life? Who is it? Sperm donor lady or lady who's partying? I don't know. It seems pretty obvious to me. And no shade to the sperm donage. Get it. But I mean... It's you, Lala. It's you. It's you. You're not happy, ma'am. You're not happy because you wanted this Randall thing to be the taking off point for you. You wanted to be the Ariana in this situation, and you weren't. And your peanut butter and jelly. And now you are going to make everyone around Ariana and Ariana suffer because you didn't get what you want. Oh. You're wrong. You're wrong. Oh, my goodness. So Lala is just, I was going to talk to you. Well, maybe you should have talked to her privately and not told Allie and Sheena at paintball and not been spreading around this propaganda that Katie's miserable when she's happier than she's been. We, this is Katie's best season ever. She's happy. She's free of short. She's like, whatever. She's dragging him. She's dragging Sandoval. Her hair is just impeccable. She looks great. She feels great. She's like just hooking up, having fun, choo-choo, running a train through Schwartz's friends like we love to see. Oh, God. But Lala's just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's like, you're not in a happy place, Katie. Quit trying to project your unhappiness onto Katie. You're just mad. You're mad. You're mad. So they talk about how at Foxfire, Katie mentioned Lala not being loyal and consistent. And Katie says, it's not that I don't think you're loyal and consistent, Lala. It's that I feel your softness is going toward people 
that are not necessarily the most deserving of it. Ding, ding, ding. That is the perfect answer. It's true. You are showing this grace or this softness towards the losers. <laughs> People who have treated you like shit and you're turning on your friends. So you're not soft. Ugh. Katie also tells Lala she feels like Lala has been more defensive with her lately. And she has. Lala says, I think because you and I were inseparable. And, you know, friends go through things. Boom, boom, boom. Like life changes. You and Ariana are like very close now. And I don't really know where my place is. Oh, my God. we're uh, Now we're jealous of Ariana's friendships. We're jealous of Ariana's sponsorships. We're jealous of Ariana's storyline. We're jealous of the empathy Ariana gets. We're jealous of her successes. And now we're jealous of people who are friends with her. I'm so, right? It's like sick disappointing because it's such a 180 from where we were at last season. Here she is. Lala was trying to make something up that just it wasn't true. Ugh. trying to blame Katie and villainize her. And, and then Ariana's like, ah, can we all just like lie in that? What did she say? Can we all just lay in one big bed and do nothing? And this was one of my favorite uh, memes that Ariana shared. Uh, Bravo TV actually made it. So when uh, Ariana's like, can we just have a night where we all lay in one big bed and do nothing? And it totally reminded me of the Summer House Girls. Oh my God. It, they had, that's, more friendship goals. These ladies, they, they trust each other. They come to each other. They seem to have each other's backs being Paige, Sierra, and Amanda. Um, and they have for quite a few seasons now, and they're always just hanging on. They're like, fuck these dudes sometimes. And they're, they're what girlfriends should be a place where you can go and feel safe and, you know, be emotional, have fun, giggle, um, and not have to worry that one of them is stabbing you in the back or secretly jealous of you or having sex with your boyfriend. And I don't think any of them have slept with any of their significant others. So it's like, I want that for the ladies of Vanderpump. And this could have been the season. We could have freaking had this with the women banding together. There are two Toms to take down. Two. And yet you're Lala, you miss tough Lala. I hated what that episode where she was like disengage. You don't want, you don't want what? You don't want what? What don't you want? You and your white boy dread brother talking about you on the podcast. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I don't understand what, what you're like 35 years old. What, what are you going to fight people? What are you going to do? What, what do you mean? You don't want this. You're not going to be able to drag anybody. <laughs> and who cares if you do? Katie will eviscerate you. <laughs> With going back and forth verbally. It's so ridiculous. Like this girl, you don't want it. Want what? What are you going to do? Take me to the mountains where you were born and show me where you got your thuggish, ruggish bone. What are you going to do? I don't understand. What's happening? What? Communicate. Talk. Quit projecting. Ugh. But I want this for the ladies. But instead, Lala's like, nah, bitch, I'm a sellout. Mm-mm. I'm a sell out. Katie, thank you so much for the super chat. Katie Kirshner says, Katie doing Katie. She's the most beautiful, most honest. Even tequila Katie is cooler than the Toms. Yes, 100%. Even tequila Katie. Mm -hmm. Lucinda says, Lala, you're mad. Katie's getting the girls and boys and having to uh, not buy a baby. Uh, team Katie, you go girl, have fun. I think she, I think like Katie's, she doesn't know how to handle. Lala, she's that friend and that. Ugh, she is. She's that friend that gets sober or that. Okay. So I had people like this in my life, people who were like drunk. Okay. And I'm a sober person, um, but I'm an alcoholic and have been sober now for years and years. Right. But you always had that one friend who loved to be, who had a problem too, but loved to be around people drunker than them so they could feel better. They want to be around people who are sadder than them so they can feel better. So there's not necessarily doesn't have to be an alcoholic, but there's always, they want those people. So the fact that Katie is not that, she wants to drag her back into that. That I think is what's happening here. Besides the jealousy of Ariana, uh, Lala can't, she can't compute. She can't, you know, there's so much she wants the people around her to kind of be miserable or someone to fix. And Sheena's great for that because Sheena is very open about like, I have OCD and I'm struggling with my marriage. And I was like, yeah, bitch. Yeah. I'll, I'm there. You know, but anyone that seems to be doing well or possibly better than her 
or getting more attention than her or someone who's very secure, someone who has good confidence, Lala's going to hate on, unfortunately. Oh, yes. Oh, she could. She could have. I don't want to. I was thinking about that last episode. I didn't say it. Um, but there are some dry drunk tendencies. And if you know, you know. Um, I don't know for sure. You know, we've all struggled here and there. But there, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, she, Emily, she's not coming off sad to me. Katie's not. No. Yeah, she's like needs a project end dub. She needs project friends. And she's weirdly, I want someone to do a video. It might have to be me. Um, but maybe Christina Coca will do it. Uh, because her videos rule. Um, about Ariana's obsession with Stassi. Or not Ariana's. Lala's obsession with Stassi. And how she wants to be the new Stassi. But you'll never be Stassi. Like, no offense, all offense. But that came and went. But she wants to, like, there times have evolved and progressed and the new like it girl on the show isn't going to be the same as it was in the beginning. And Stassi was Stassi. Like she love her or hate her. She was, that's who she was. And she was like, yeah, that's me. And then at times she was like, I don't want to be like this. I want to be better. Or I don't want, you know, so she, but I don't want to get too far into, into that. But uh, yeah, fixing themselves through other people and projecting that shit. It's so annoying. So then, you know, Katie gets emotional because Lala's like, ah. and Katie's like, I don't understand. How can I not be there for you just because I'm friends with Ariana? I'm literally single. I'm not, you know, I not, don't have a husband. I don't have a family right now. I don't have uh, kids. I I am always available. And Lala's like, Katie's like, I have all the time in the world and I want to be your friend. So what does it matter who I'm friends with? Katie gets emotional and says, you know, I don't, I feel like I, I, don't feel like I don't have time for you, Lala. That makes me feel sad. Lala's just sitting there with her injected lips open, like, and I'm like, Lala, oh my God. Not knowing what to say because she doesn't have, she doesn't make any sense. And she knows that. And she's just painting herself into a corner. So Katie, you're not there for me. She's like, um, I'm going to tell you something. Um, as someone who's been friends with Lala now for <laughs> Gretchen Wiener here, um, like a couple years, we're really close friends. We're like best friends. She tells me all the time. Sometimes she tells me to shut up and I do. Anyways, I just want you to know that Lala needs someone who's going to check in on her. Yes, regularly. She needs someone to check in on her. And Katie's like, I do. I text her. I call her. And Lala's like, yeah, she does. She does do that. So her point is she's lying. <laughs> Again, <laughs> she got real quiet when Katie was like using logic. Like, I, I, what? I've been there for you. Lala's like, ah, oh, shit. I was, I was going to use that on Ariana because she's been so busy with her deal. But Katie is around. Damn it. Ah, and it's like, Lala, yes, life has changed. You're a mother now. So you might be drawn to be friends with more mothers because you got kid stuff. You're doing kid stuff. And that's any, any mom will tell you, yeah, my friends that have kids, like they hang out with a lot of other moms because their kids are in stuff and you can relate to the kid stuff. So she's just a sitting there and she was like, mm, I just want to tell you that. Okay. Thank you. Lala. Did I get some points? And you're like, Sheena, please stop. Sheena, please stop. Oh, okay. And then Katie's like, I check on her all the time. Katie said, I would love to have Lala as a close friend in my life. And she also, but she says it goes both ways. So it's an effort, not an obligation is what Katie said. Katie is no matter what you think of Katie, Katie is emotionally mature in that sense. She will explain the way she'll say things. You'll, oh, Katie gets it. Katie gets it. Katie, Katie gets it. She might not be presented in the package that we tend to accept of, of, of women. She might, she might sometimes be like, I don't care. I think I'm a bitch, whatever. And people are like, oh my God. <gasps> but this season, she has not been wrong yet. I can't name a situation where Katie hasn't been right. <laughs> For real. And with this as well, saying, you know, it goes both ways. I want you in my life. And it seemed heartfelt, her saying it. Lala's just seemed fake and contrived. She's trying to make something up. And she just says, you know, uh, oh, shoot, I lost it here. Uh, that it's not an obli or it's an effort, friendship. It's an effort, not an obligation. And that, I think, is a perfect point. Lala then says, Okay, yeah, bitch, everything you're saying is correct, ho. 
I don't take a lot of time to be with you, but I need you to know I love you for exactly the person you are. All I'm looking for is what I want us to show up for each other. We've done it for many years. And Katie says, yes. Lala says, let's just get back to that. And I'm like, oh my God, Lala's so confusing. Now Katie's crying and shaking her head. Yes. Thinking she did something wrong and she didn't. It's so stupid. <laughs> Lala's creating drama with her friends that doesn't need to be created. When there are two perfectly good Toms that could be dragged right now. They're right over in the booth over there. One's wearing a woman's suit. Could be yours. Go get them. Rough, rough. Oh, my goodness. Who said horrible things about you. How you made your baby last time. Bootleg housewife. Talked about your everything. But okay, yeah, Katie's the villain. Mm -hmm. And Ariana. What a bunch of bitches. Oh, my goodness. Uh, then... Lala goes, let's just go back to being the Spice Girls. And it's like, bitch, you caused all these problems. What are you talking about? Go back. You're the one that keeps dragging us down into woman fighting hell for no reason. You're the one that keeps saying stuff about people behind their backs. And you don't have a good reason other than they have friends that you might be a little peanut butter and jelly about. What's wrong with you? How do you not see this? This is not fun to watch. This is insane. This is like insane in the membrane. You literally are causing a problem and then going, ah, bitch, let's, it's like, you did it. <laughs> You're the reason for the season. You're the only one fighting these bitches. You're the only one causing fraction within the women. It's you. It's you. And a little bit Gretchen Wiener Sheena. Oh my gosh. We need, I need Ariana and Kay to quit dancing around it and just tell her, shut up. Pull a Tom Sandoval. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Oh. Tell her, Lala, why are you creating all this drama? I mean, they're saying it in nice ways. But they need to just call her ass out and go, "This, what is happening? Are you getting extra money from production for doing this? Is there a reason? You, you've done a one. You don't make any sense. I mean, Katie did try last episode. I mean, like, it doesn't make sense. You don't know, Joe. Why are you? Huh? She's like, bitch, my life don't got to make sense to you, bitch. Disengage. And you're like, but what? You're the one asking Ariana to make her life make sense. Okay, okay. We're going to move on because she is insufferable. This, you're, you're insufferable, Lala. You're insufferable. You don't have to be this way. That's the beauty. You don't have to. You're choosing to for whatever reason. More money, jealousy, whatever. It's ridiculous. No one, I guarantee very few people want to watch this shit. You like this. It's a mess. Then Sandoval is sitting with Schwartz. He's like, Doug said there's another place we can get. Think about it. He's just, Schwartz, give me your money. Sandoval is like in an MLM scheme now. He's trying to sell Schwartz stuff he can't afford and shouldn't go into business with him. He's like, let's do another bar, even though the first bar uh, isn't doing that well. And I, I ditched it when I was having sex with the wrong people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then she was like, I have to go to the ladies room. And on the way to the ladies room, she's just like, I'm in the ladies. Oh, hey guys. What's up? It's me, Sheena. I have a new song coming out. It's called Apples. Ha 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 ha. It might be kind of about you, Tom. And Tom's like, what? Yeah, there might be some lyrics. It's something like, you know, narcissistic psycho, cut you out like lipo. Something like that. What? Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I say something like, um, there's one line that says, Ferrari to a Jetta, you can do much better. <laughs> Isn't it clever? It's cute. Me in the 27s. Yeah, we, we did it. And Tom's like, keep making money off me, Sheena. Okay. <laughs> it was so funny. So Tom Sandoval says, you know, uh, you don't do a song about our Farrah? She's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's open to interpretation. Like, whatever. No, no, this is a Ferrari to a Jetta. You can do much better. Yeah, it's like that. It's, it's like, mm, it's pretty great. It's it's Ralph Waldo Emerson. It's like really great. Um, You went from something uh good to something not. Or you went from something gold to something not. You went from something gold to something not. You know, something, it rhymes. It's better. It's better when you hear it. It's like really good. It's like, I mean, when that song without you, that's karma, that's karma. Yeah, it's like. And we, the 27s are great. Anywho. And then Schwartz is kind of laughing. Sheena's smirking and Schwartz says, oh yeah, that could be anybody. Then Sheena says, oh, you're not going to be able to hate it, Sandoval. And Sandoval replies, you feel different uh, if you went through what I went through. And I was writing a song about you. Uh. But that's okay. It's fine. He says. <laughs> 
Then Sandoval gets up from the table, walks away, puts on his stunner shades in his woman's power suit from women's world.com. And Sheena looks at Schwartz with big eyes like, oh my God. Ah. And then Schwartz is like, oh man, he's pissed. I want to hear about this. He wants me to invest in his house. Sheena says to Schwartz, I thought you guys already heard it. It's so crazy. It's like number one. It's like charting. It's so crazy. You didn't hear it. It's so weird. You guys, are you like not on the internet? I like check all the time. Hold on. I think I got a comment. Oh my God. Someone left a mean comment about me. That's horrible. Oh God. Oh. Okay, hold on. I got to think of a reply. If they say, you're a nasty biznatch and you're fake, what, what should I say? I should say, you are. Okay, never mind. I got it. I got it. Narcissistic psycho block you from my social. Is that, is that, okay. I'll work. I'll get, I'll get with the 27s. We'll work on it. Okay. So Sandoval still walking away says, fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. I'm out. Then we cut to Sandoval's confessional and he's saying, I feel like Sheena and I have really come a long way y'all. Uh. What? What? <laughs> we were really starting to become friends again now. Huh? Okay. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Um, And then it's like, go profit off my pain. What's What pain? The pain you caused by putting your dick where it didn't belong over and over again? Being an asshole? And continuing to like rewrite history? And try to villainize Ariana and Katie. Is that what we're talking about? No. Okay. Um, Schwartz has explained to Sheena that Tom Sandoval, he's, he's, a, he's just a little ruffled because of the um, podcast with Rachel Raquel. Oh my God. Get over it, bro. She don't love you. Cut to Tom Sandoval's confession. As he's saying, it's just like Tom's just got to be collateral damage in this. You can't be collateral damage in the thing you cause. That is not what collateral damage means. Bro, you caused the damage. You're the reason for the accident. You took a left turn right into them. What are you talking about? He says, Tom's just got to be collateral damage in this, bro. It's your problem. You caused it. You can't be collateral damage in something you fucking did, dum dum. <laughs> this dude, like, who wants to watch this? This is trash. This is, and I like trash TV, but this is like garbage. Garbage, trash, dumpster. Hate it. Ugh. Blech. And they didn't, I'd be like, excuse me, where is Alex basket case to interject and go, Tom, Tom, that's not how collateral damage works. You, you're, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. You know, it's not, blah, blah, blah. You, you can't, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm collateral damage in my own bullshit in this. And uh, then we see him grabbing both of his purses because he means business. He put on his stunner shades, his pearl necklace, his power suit. He grabs both purses. He's heading out of Tom Tom in his woman's power suit with his pearl necklace and his sunglasses. And Sandoval says, if Sheena was really caring about me, mending things, like she wouldn't have done this. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't have a song or merch about as you're wearing a dipped out shirt. So your pain was so painful. That you caused the pain, but okay. That you're wearing merch. You went on tour performing and singing about it. But the line is when anyone else makes money off it. Gotcha, Tom. We see you. You've only been mad when people make money. Like when the ladies sold all that merch on something about her, yet it hasn't opened yet. You were so mad about that. That's all you care about, bro. Uh, so he says that. And then on his way out, we see him walking out. Of time, time, it takes them forever. But welcome to being a woman, sir. You got to gather all your goodies, make sure everything's in your purse. Where's my cell phone? And they can, you'll learn this, Tom, more and more as you appropriate our woman culture. When a purse can be like, uh, it's like an endless pit. You're just like, oh my God, like where are you? And your phone has been right on top the whole time, but you could be digging for an hour looking for that shit. An hour. So finally, he's out. He's got both of his purses. He walks past Sheena, who's still standing by Schwartz, and he says, keep cashing in on my misery. Dude, shut up. <laughs> Speak of shut up. Oh, my gosh. Katie Kirchner, thank you for the super chats. And Sandoval's pain, hashing support uh, the cause. Hashtag pour him GoFundMe, for real. Bro, you did it. You did it. It's you. You're the problem. It's you. Okay, we have to keep reminding you, Ariana already told you this. Everyone has told you this. You don't want to believe it. We're not stupid. We're not buying into your bullshit. I don't care what producers do. Like Ariana said, you can fuck off. Okay, nothing happened. You did it. Nothing happened. You did it. Yeah.
nothing happened to you, Tom. You did these things. There are consequences to your actions. If people are making money off of the scandal, so are you. Everybody is. But you did it. You're not collateral damage. You're not a victim. The only misery you've caused is yourself. Misery loves you. Misery loves company. And you're your own company. Misery and misery. So there you go, sir. You can fuck off. He is a victim. Blame me 100% of the way. So I don't believe anything that just came out of his mouth. I think he's full of shit. And he can fuck off. He can fuck off. Yep. Ariana, beautifully said, you guys. And that was the episode. And it was a meaty episode. I had to take notes because it was just like so much. And I had to take so many breaks. Okay. And speaking of ADHD, uh, Cassandra says, thanks for my background silliness. So I could go into an ADHD laundry spree that was terribly needed. I, I, do, I understand that more than you'll ever know. If I have something good, meaty, silly, fun, drama sometimes in my ear, I can clean the whole damn house. Okay. My husband will be like, oh, you're getting a lot done. Are you listening to drama? I'll go, I am. I am. I listen to one of my dramas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cammy says, welcome to being a woman, Tom, with your purses and pearls. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need something. We, I mean, this is ridiculous. Do only men run the show? Do only men and internalized misogynist women run these shows? How could anyone look at what has happened last season to now and not want the women to come together and be boss ass bitches and tell, put these dudes in their place? There was no other arc for this season. There was no, nothing else we needed. Other than the women joining together and going, oh, my God, look what they've been doing to us. They've been villainizing us, playing us, getting great edits, getting to be the narrators. And now we can all come together and be like, nah, the tides have turned. And we would see the tides turn. There's no reason for any of the women to be fighting. The season was supposed to be, it's just me against the Toms, baby. Women against the Toms. It's just the girls against the Toms, baby. It was supposed to be like that. And whoever interjected and fucked that up, I mean, you you may have put the nail in the coffin of your show, and maybe you wanted to. Maybe Alex Basket Case and them are like, ugh, I'm going to be done. We're moving on to the valley. We're over the shit. This feels like intentional. It feels weird. It feels weird. Thank you, Linda. Thank you guys so much. Um, for being here and all of your, uh, wonderful <laughs> Lisa says, I've had enough of Kristen already, <laughs> but think of the greater good, just briefly, just briefly, you know, casting spells on these hoes, just coming in, casting spells on the Tom hoes. How nice would that be? And then you go about your life, you know, uh, Jen Noel, thank you so much for the super chat. Jen said, does no one on the show use Instacart? <laughs> With how obsessed some of the cast is with stocking TP, et cetera, you would think they didn't know this could be delivered. Hell, Uber will deliver it to, oh, there's tons of delivery services and people that, uh, you know, work there, that want the work. You could go, yeah. Target even delivers. Is that Target's Instacart? I've never done Target delivery because I just love going into Target. <laughs> it's just my favorite. But I have done the pull up where you pull up. I just, I love just being on the premises of Target. It's my church. I love it. So, yep, Jen, we had high hopes for a season of Boss Bitches. So disappointed. Thank you, Cami. You guys are wonderful. Shout out to all my moderators in the chat. Thank you for all your hard work. Shout out to my members on YouTube and my supporters on Patreon. All of our super chatters today, Evelyn, uh, Delicia, Katie, Pamela, Jill, MN Blondie, Marissa, A. Callis, uh, Chickenhead PK Neely, J. Artist, Nicole, Linda. Linda, I think I missed yours. I'm so sorry. Linda Devlin, thank you so much. Oh, I missed a couple. I'm so sorry. Uh, Linda, thank you so much for the super sticker. Chicken heads said Lala says Katie was not honest. Supposedly Katie was upset about not opening the sandwich shop, but she won't say a word against, um, Ariana. But like, even if she was upset about the thing, Katie understands the assignment. You got next season to be mad. This was the season to call out the Toms on the Tom foolery that just happened. Oh my goodness. Um, thank you, Pamela. Uh, I missed this too. Pamela said my BF is a fan now after seeing your Buffy DVD. Oh, thank you. I love Buffy. Mm -hmm. Is it after seeing my little Buffy VHS? My brother got this for me as a, um, it's a little lamp. There's a guy. Oh, I think there's a couple accounts on Instagram that make these, but I'm obsessed, obsessed with Buffy. 
obsessed, obsessed. Um, Katie, Jen, and Elizabeth coming in with a super chat. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, says Schwartz started the show saying, I dropped out of med school. Is that how? I don't even remember that. To be a model, it gives Joe private school vibes. They are calculating play ignorant. Oh, yeah. Tom Schwartz is very smart. There was a time, I think during Scandal, I was like, oh, Tom Schwartz is stupid or something like he'd maybe he doesn't get it. Or, and people are like, no, no, he's acting. And I was like, oh, you have to remember that he does. He does play dumb. Him and Joe do play dumb so that they get more sympathy. This is so many acts. So many acts. Yes, yes, yes. So oh, you guys have been amazing, wonderful. Hit that like on your way out. Comment after the video post because I don't get to get to all of your comments and I love to hear from you guys. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Follow me on the social media and I'll be back tomorrow. We got, I never got to the Valley last week, but we're getting to the Valley this week. I haven't watched the new episode yet, but I will. And we will talk about it. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, and like I always say, enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you see,